This meeting is being recorded. All right. Okay, it is Monday. This is, excuse me, it is 5.30 and this is the Monday, December 5th, 2022, regular meeting of the Architectural Review Committee of the City of Palm Springs. Um, please mute your audio if you're joining us online. Mr. Newell, please do roll call. Uh, Member Thompson is excused. Member Walsh? Here. Uh, Member Payline? Here. Member McCoy is excused. Member Lockyer? Here. Member Dozy? Here. Vice Chair Rotman? Here. And Chair Drakeway? Here. So we have a quorum. Thank you. Maybe we have a staff report on the posting of the agenda. Here, Jake Wayne, committee members, our agenda was posted on Wednesday, November 30th, 2022. It, our agenda has been posted in accordance with um, state law. Thank you. <clears throat> Does the committee have any revisions to the agenda? Um, I have two revisions. Item number seven, Insight Property Group, I'd like to remove that from today's agenda. And these are the reasons why, and if anybody on the committee has any additional reasons, please let us know so that we can um, let, the, let, let the applicant know what they still need to provide us with. Um, the plans are very accurate and complete. The canopies in the parking lot are not shown on any site plans. There's no roof plan for the canopies or elevations indicating the heights. The floor plan for the main building does not match the elevations. If you look at the elevation on sheet A901, there is clearly building masses and overhang which frame the window wall in the front of the building. These elements which project from the building mass are not included on the floor plan. Also, there is a, green, a gray metal panel and a blue metal panel adjacent to this facade. And those are obviously in the elevation shown in a different plane, but they're not shown on the floor plan. There's no building sections. There's no mechanical screening. On the materials list on page A401, calls out two sets of existing doors, <clears throat> but this is not an existing building, and it specifies nine different types and or colors of CMU, but it's not possible to determine where these different types of CMU are used on the project. Those are my, <clears throat> that isn't everything, but that's my list of the obvious things that need to be addressed. Does anybody on the committee have anything else that we'd like to tell the applicant to include in their next submittal? Especially if there's any landscaping issues, Tom, if you've had a chance to look at it. Yeah, I think that they do need to have a more complete plan uh, for our review, or at least okay. have a plan. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. And the other item that I'd like to change on the agenda is item <clears throat> number six which is Studio A, R, and D Architects. <clears throat> because Sean isn't physically with us yet, he's in his car. Let's move that up to the first item so that we can discuss it while he's driving and then we can <clears throat> jump back to the main agenda. So now that we've, do we have a motion to accept the agenda with those revisions? No <clears throat> move, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, John. Is there a second? I'll second. Second by Robert, all in favor? Uh, aye. aye. Any opposed? <clears throat> okay, thank you. <clears throat> Excuse me. Since this is a public meeting, audience members are permitted to comment on any item, any issue that is within this committee's purview. Comments on an item appearing on today's agenda are made at the time that that item is presented. If anybody would like to speak on an item not on today's agenda, you may speak now. Okay, I don't see anybody. Um, we'll proceed to the meeting minutes from the last minute. Are there any revisions to the minutes of the <clears throat> November 7th meeting? In case, <clears throat> seeing no revisions, um, we're gonna then vote on the <clears throat> minutes along with the consent agenda. So the consent agenda has two items. It is the minutes of the November 7th meeting and also item number two, J.R. Havendale LLC 
owner for a minor architectural application to modify the storefront of an existing building facade for a new restaurant, Churrasco Brazilian Steakhouse, along a major thoroughfare located at 450 South Palm Canyon Drive. Do we have a motion to approve the consent calendar? Also move. Robert, second. do we have a second? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, we're going to skip ahead now to item number six, Studio A R and D Architects on behalf of Pinnacle View LLC for major architectural and administrative minor modification applications to construct a 5,100 square foot single family residence with the maximum building height of 21 feet on a 21,195 square foot undeveloped hillside property located at 2462 Rising Sun Court. May we have a staff report, please? Yes, thank you. Let me share my screen. <clears throat> and for the record, Mr. Chair and the rest of the uh, audience members, Member Law here is recusing himself from this item uh, due to a conflict. Uh, so he will not be participating. That's right. Thank you. Right. The proposed project is a, a new single family residence in a desert Palisades specific plan area. And the project proposes a 5,100 square foot residence on a 21,195 square foot lot. Uh, with the maximum building height of 21 feet. Uh, in conjunction with a major architectural application, the applicant has submitted an administrative minor modification application uh, for the proposed 21 foot building height. Uh, this is a project site. Uh, project site is lot 103, which is located in the south southwestern portion of the specific uh, plan area. Uh, the character defining feature of the project site uh, is the two large boulders, uh, which you can see in this area of view. Uh, these are the, the photos of the project site and surroundings. As you see, there are no existing development uh, in the vicinity, and uh, the planning record indicates that there are no pending entitlements uh, for the development of lots that are immediately adjacent to the project site. Uh, the project site, uh, the topography slopes down from its northwest corner to southeast corner with an elevation difference of approximately 22 feet. And there is no historic drainage flow that runs through the project site. And this is a proposed uh, site plan and the landscape plan. Uh, the property is going to be accessible from uh, Rising Sun Court. And uh, the driveway, um, bends towards the east of the property to uh, avoid the direct line of sight and approach towards the garage. And uh, coming and arriving at uh, the property uh, from the garage, uh, the garage leads to uh, stairways, which leads to the bedroom number two and three. And it goes to higher elevation, bedroom number one, and to the kitchen and living area, and finally bedroom number four at the west end. And this is a proposed, uh, the south elevation, which is a primary elevation of the residence. Um, the pro 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 excuse me, the proposed residence, uh, the volume it breaks down into a few uh, different sections. And uh, the project proposes uh, cast a cast in place concrete wall for the treatment of the exterior elevation, as well as vertical wood siding and blackened steel. And the project proposes uh, the fences uh, to provide a pool enclosure for the area. And this is the east elevation of the proposed residence. Applicants proposing uh, to treat the exterior building wall with a stucco, and there will be a large floating window at the end of the stairs, which connect all floors. And uh, you see uh, the equipment, the trash enclosure uh, that's designed in the same material, which is a stucco. And this is the north elevation of the proposed residence. 
Um, for this innovation, the application of the wood siding is proposed and the elevation design is characterized by expensive glazing system in a horizontal orientation. And this is a west elevation residence. <clears throat> um, again, the casting concrete is proposed for the, the treatment of exterior building, uh, as well as a stucco wall. And these are the sections of the proposed residence. Um, the, the number two, which is an image on top, that is a section that's taken where the stairs are located. Um, as the staff mentioned earlier, uh, this residence uh, steps up from the garage to bedrooms to the living area. And the image at the bottom shows uh, the garage at the lowest elevation uh, going up to uh, the master bedroom to the living area. Uh, that project proposes a stepping design as you can see here. And uh, the image on top shows an area that's highlighted in orange or pink. Um, due to the site's topography, it is challenging for the project to fully conform to the 18 foot uh, building below. And uh, this is just to show where the projection is proposed and AMM approval is requested. And uh, the image at the bottom shows the, the site's elevation difference. Uh, as the staff mentioned earlier, uh, the total elevation difference on this property is 22 feet. And again, um, this is a section uh, just to show the projection about the 18 foot pillow. Uh, the area that's shown in uh, the color is actually a chimney and the roof that connects to the main part of the residence. Again, uh, the sloping topography uh, makes it difficult for the project to fully conform to the building height restriction. Um, these are the materials that are proposed for this project. Uh, the project proposes a mix of concrete, metal, and wood. The proposed color palette is desert neutral uh, what I'd like you to take a look at is uh, material legend number 11, which is a mirror, and applicants proposing to apply uh, mirrors uh, to the soffit and the angled exterior building wall at the main entrance. Uh, these are the proposed renderings of the house. Again, the design is uh, desert modern, and uh, there will be a pool in the front of the residence. Uh, close to the street, excuse me, towards the street side. And the uh, proposed landscape is to complement the open space rather than to alter the site's existing landscape. And uh, these are the views, um, excuse me, the view of the patio um, looking south. And uh, the image at the left hand side bottom shows that the design uh, includes a retaining wall and a cantilevered outdoor uh, living space. Um, as staff mentioned earlier, uh, the character defining feature of this site is a two large boulders and the proposed design incorporates um, those boulders into the overall design. And the image uh, to the left on the top, um, this is the area where the applicants propose to install mirrors the soffit and the angled wall by the entrance. This is a proposed roof plan. Um, the applicant is proposing a tank colored roof membrane for this project. And the findings. Uh, the project conforms, to, uh, conforms with the development standards except for the proposed building height of 21 feet. However, a deviation to the building height uh, may be permitted subject to AMM application approval and applicant has submitted one. And the project generally meets the required findings of the Architectural Hillside Review and the Desert Pisces specific plan design guidelines, except for the use of reflective material and uh, the wire early that uh, projects into the east yard, which is pretty minimal. And uh, the staff finds that uh, the applicant's request for AMM approval is justified the site's existing uh, conditions and topography. And the project is in conformance with applicable regulations and guidelines as conditions. And uh, the, the conditions of approval recommended by staff uh, will not really alter the nature of the project and character of the proposed design. 
for this reason, the staff is recommending that the architecture review committee adopt the resolution and approve the project subject to conditions of approval, uh, which include but are not limited to the following. Remove the proposed mirrors from the soffit and angle the exterior building wall, and there shall be no encroachment of outdoor lighting fixtures into the non built buffer beyond the property line. This concludes the staff presentation. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Noriko. Um, does anybody on the committee have questions for staff? No questions for staff. Okay, we can have a. Oh, I'm sorry, John Walsh. Right, I, I was late in getting my hand up. It's a, it's a minor point, but it's it's. I'm curious about it. The, is it, the the need for the AMM is is the height encroachment, and it, that looks to be a chimney stack. Is that correct? Yes, there, in addition to chimney stack, let me just go back to the slides if you don't mind. Uh, okay. So the desegregation yes. shows a little bit better. So the area that's shown in color is the area that projects beyond the 18 foot pillow. So it shows that okay. uh, the stairs, end of the stairs, and yes. then also uh, the part of the buildings there. Uh, and I think this portion right here, it's probably the most prominent, which is the chimney and the roof that connects to the main residence. Got it. If it was just the chimney, that would be exempt, correct? Uh, correct, yes. The okay. chimney is permitted to project above the building height requirement. Okay, so it's basically just the roof that is of issue. Right. This pro this projection is very incidental, but uh, yes. you know it exceeds the building height. Got it. Thank you. Thank you, Noriko. Any other questions for staff? Um, I just have a comment. I believe one of the plants on the plant palette, um, the scientific name is is mislabeled. Um, on the eucalyptus tree. Uh, the, the common name looks right for how they've used it in the plan. Um, is that just a question that we give to the applicant? Yeah, I think we can have the applicant clarify that if it's one or the other. All right, thank you. Thank you, Tom. Any other questions of staff? Okay, the applicant I'm sure is present. They have 10 minutes to present the project. Please give us your name and a Project description. <clears throat> Hi guys, um, Nick LaFaro here from Studio ARD Architects. Can everyone hear me okay? Got it, Nick. Cool. Um, thank you, Noriko. Uh, very uh, good presentation there. Um, yeah, so wanted to walk everyone through this project. We started off this project, um, just like any other Desert Palisades project, by going out and walking the site. What we found pretty unique about this site was the two large boulders um, that, that are located kind of mm -hmm. on the western uh, half of the property. I'm going to start sharing screen. So our design process here, if everyone can see my site plan, is the first thing we did when we, when we visited this site is we walked right in between these boulders and it felt like a little gateway. So we wanted the inhabitants and the visitors to feel that same way. Um, we also liked that the entry was a, a bit further back from the street than, um, than a lot of other homes that we see up there. So we created this journey, um, kind of coming to the end of the cul-de-sac, walking up and in between the boulders. We're, we're trying as much as we can to interact with these boulders through the use of, of glazing, um, the powder room will be pretty unique where we've got a little slit window that interacts with that. Um, on the left, we also have this bedroom four that's going to act as, as the den that gets a nice full view of that boulder. And again, that bathroom is getting to interact with it. Um, this is a hillside home, so we, we didn't want to create just a, a single level plan. So what we've done is we've created a... a a stepped plan, um, a split level plan. So we have our main level here, the great room. As we head east past the kitchen, we step down four feet to the master level here. As we continue down, we get to a third level, minus seven feet. 
um, which is the guest bedrooms here. And the fourth and final level at the bottom is the garage. Um, also playing with the levels, we've designed a pool system that has a couple of different infinity edges on it. So this first pool, you step down one foot six from the main level. Um, and this main pool level actually cascades down into this lower pool that interacts with the master bedroom level. Um, in order to create a little more privacy for the master bedroom, we, we wanted to incorporate a tall feature that also acts as a fireplace. So this fireplace does extend beyond the 18 foot height buffer, which is allowable, but we, are, we wanted to extend our overhang to provide um, south facing shade uh, for the master level. So we, we are extending into the 18 foot pillow, but it's strictly with exterior roof space here. Um, nothing condition space. Um, yeah, the, this house also features a garage that it is facing the street, which is, um, it, it's been seen in Desert Palisades, but I think we're achieving a good way of hiding it by creating this long driveway that we're gonna be planting multiple trees in front of. So you don't even notice that the garage is facing the street. Um, yeah, Noriko has brought up the, the mirrors that we're proposing at the front entry. And uh, the intent of those mirrors is to, uh, is to help capture more of the mountains as you're facing north. The mountains in this area of Desert Palisades are really to the west and to the southwest and to the south here. So the way this, pl this plan and house is situated it is getting to capture views from when you're inside of the house looking uh, looking south and looking west, but we, we wanted the visitor as they're approaching the house to catch a glimpse of those tall mountains. I'm gonna, I'm gonna hop over to my 3D real quick. As I wanted to show the, the grade change that we have here as you walk up to the house. The house is, actually somewhat sunken in relationship to the adjacent property. So we didn't think it was going to impact the, the single lot that's adjacent to us here too much because we think as we're walking up and we're catching this mirror that's on the sloped ceiling and the sloped wall here, you're just catching a glimpse over the future house that'll be on that lot and getting the mountains behind you instead. Um, and the, those are the only two places that we are proposing the mirror, by the way. Um, I think that's, that's all I wanted to present today. I'm here to answer everyone's questions. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Nick. Um, at this point, we are open for public comments from the audience. Is there anybody in the waiting room who would like to comment on this project. It appears not. Um, so now let's have if the committee has any questions for the applicant. Um, Nick, I have a couple of questions. The swimming pools, is the lower pool intended to be a pool that you would swim in or is it more like a reflecting or a feature pool? Uh, we actually see it as both. Um, if I may share screen again. Hold on. We, we have this line here that aligns with our exterior cantilevered hardscape. We imagine this as a tanning shelf um, that would be about nine inches of water. So it's more of like a wading pool kind of reflective Pool. But here, we actually envision somewhere where you may not necessarily swim, but you're getting your whole body kind of in there and you can float around and interact with people that are sitting on this patio by swimming over and putting your, your elbows on and hanging off of the coping there. So is there any 
Is there any way to access the yard where the pools are other than coming in the front gate? The pedestrian um, gate? I, I think you'd have to kind of march your squeeze past some boulders here and march your way up this way. But uh, the only people who would be doing that would be the pool men. Well, that's what I'm thinking. And that leads to my next question. How do you clean mm. that lower pool? There's nothing to stand on on both sides. I think he's going to need to get access to this hardscape here um, outside of the master in order to get up there and clean this lower pool. So he would need to go through the master bedroom because that's up off the ground. I, maybe we can incorporate some sort of stairs on this south side here <laughs> um, or boulders or something in order to get him access. Um, yeah. <laughs> Or I we, think you're going to have to be a little careful with that because if it creates an access for the pool guy, does it then eliminate the effectiveness of the pool fence? I hear you. Yep. So I can't answer those. I just threw those out as questions that you, you know, just good. for you to consider. Yeah, really good questions. Um, and then at the end of the stairwell, you've got that little projection that's getting an AMM to be in the side yard but there's no way to get from that stairwell outside. Is there a way to get a door in the sidewall there or something so that people coming from the kitchen, if you're carrying garbage from the kitchen to the trash cans, right now you have to go into the garage, walk past all the cars, open the garage door and go outside, which isn't a very practical way to do it. Yep. I think what I'd rather do yeah, what I want to do is move this door closer to the stairs, yeah. make make this a solid wall, and then get access right here from inside of the garage. On the so little that, wall, on the little wall that projects out where you just drew the red wall, that wall there, could mm -hmm. that be a pocket door sliding in where you drew the red wall? I I don't know that it can be, Tom, because our our intent here is actually to have the footing right. of the of this um, down here. So we actually envisioned this as a fixed piece of glass with only one seam in it that's actually floating above the grade out here. So, yeah, I saw that on the elevations. Yeah. OK. Um, committee, any other committee members have uh, questions? Robert? Yeah, just a couple. Um, so uh, on the mirrored wall, have you done a solar study with like when the sun would hit it and what the impact would be? We have not yet. Because I would think at your entry door, there would be certain times of the year and day where you would just be fried. <laughs> <laughs> or blinded. <laughs> or blinded. Yeah, uh, you definitely don't want to get your food delivered and wait <laughs> there for a couple of <laughs> Because it, that's basically facing south. It, it one one hundred percent is yeah. yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. The other question I have is uh, in the master bathroom area. Um, it's elevated above the street, but you have but that shower and bathtub are really exposed to the street. What are you doing in terms of glazing there uh, for privacy, or what do you plan for privacy? We planned on using trees for privacy. Let me see if I can find that landscape plan. Uh, bear with me a second. But we, we were planning on mostly use, utilizing uh, trees for it. Um, I, th I think if a homeowner were to purchase this and um, not enjoy how open and <laughs> that is, I think we could add a reflected film to the glazing. Um, So we do have two trees right here. Yeah, but from the street, you're pretty exposed, aren't you? For the shower, where the slider is for the shower. Mm -hmm. Let's see real quick. Yes, you are. Yeah, yeah you'll be putting on a show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, we, yeah, we, we weren't terribly concerned because this is Desert Palisades and 
it's one of the last lots. You you really got to be kind of. Well, but you're you know eventually the lot across the street will be developed, True. and their True. front yard will have a direct view <laughs> to that shower. Um, and then um, my last question just escaped my head. Uh, <laughs> give me a moment. Um, oh, the pool fencing. So can you walk me through what happens in the gap, gaps where you have boulders and just exactly how you're sort of closing the gap around the pool? Yeah, <laughs> so what we're hoping and planning on doing with the areas where there are boulders is to get cacti and a yucca and um, really stack these boulders high, about five foot high, same height as the adjacent fencing. Um, if that ends up not being enough, we, we are planning on getting, um, <clears throat> we can put fencing in between as well. Okay. Yep. All right. Great. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Thank you, Robert. Anybody else have questions from the committee? Tom Dosey. I have a question. Nick, um, could you explain a little bit how the the roadway system works there um, for guests there, you know, where you have the guest or entrance to the home? It almost seems like a visitor would have to park on that little uh, turnout or stub um, because there's no act like if somebody wanted to park in the driveway, it doesn't look like there's any uh, ability for them to get to the front walk and they would be kind of forced to park in the street there. Yeah. Do you envision that as a problem or? What we'd like to do is, well, we, we do have this for more long-term guests who would be staying with them. For guests that are just coming over for a dinner party, Desert Palisades does have this eight foot decomposed granite um right of way um throughout the community about two weeks ago we proposed another project on lot 10 in this community where we had proposed to carve out a section of our property and to continue that decomposed granite into our own property and to blend it to to allow and and grant access to visitors. When, when we drew these plans, we weren't sure if that was going to be approved um, as we presented on lot 10. So so Tom, that would be my solution um, to this question. If, if we would be allowed to um, continue that decomposed granite into our own property and to shape our boulders to make that um, guest parking. So you could actually create like a little turnout or pool out there for guests. Correct. That's right. I mean, I think that would be a good solution, um, you know, as the project builds out and if you have numerous guests arriving. Yep. We would like to do that. And, and there's no way the grade allows if somebody did park in the driveway to come around the front outside of the pool. Uh, to connect. Mm -hmm. You're saying to maybe come up this way. Well, I mean, even even further down towards the street. Okay. There, there's some somewhere. <laughs> well, what I like about what you're going towards, or or what I what I'm interpreting is we're giving up a lot of land right now mm -hmm. to the to the front yard. I'm wondering if there's a way that we can re-examine our our fence system. I didn't draw that very accurately. But I think I, I could kind of solve your concerns, Tom, and Chairman uh, Jackways by, by maybe extending this a little bit further, getting some sort of gate access here um, accessible from this motor court. And what I like about that, too, is not only allowing the pool men more access, but now maybe a guest can interact and experience this two-tiered pool in a different way um, rather than only the master bedroom. Right. I mean, that could be a really nice experience going along that walkway up towards. Yeah, I, I agree. And, and then the only other comment I had, I, I, I believe um, there's one eucalyptus species called out on the uh, plant palette. 
The Moon Lagoon, right? Yeah, which, which is a small, um, almost like a shrub. Yeah, so... <laughs> But the, sign, the the Latin name that's given refers to a eucalyptus that gets about 90 feet tall. So I would just ask for that correction. Okay. Uh, it, to... It's interesting, Tom, because, yeah, we, we know the Moon Lagoon. We love it. it it's, you're right. It's, it's technically a, a tree, but it, it grows much more like a very large shrub. And we like to use it for screening uh, equipment and things of that nature. Um, in, a, in our research, we, we've always used this eucalyptus spec, and we've been... Yeah, yeah I believe it's uh, eucalyptus lunata versus oh. me, me, Meliodora. <laughs> yeah, I, I would like to update that. So, okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I will, yeah, we'll update that. Your neighbors might. <laughs> excited about a 90-foot eucalyptus. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Tom, anything else? Uh, no. I, I, well, just one comment on the lighting. Um, you know, the fixtures are called out in the specifications on the cut sheets that have variable uh, wattage. Mm -hmm. And I would just encourage them to, to create as much of a low level lighting as possible. We, we'll do that. We, on our, on our plans, we specify five watts for the majority of these lights. Okay, any other questions for the applicant? John Walsh. Um, just just a, a, to sort of um, enjoin uh, what Tom does, he was talking about parking. And I do remember the, the project that came up a couple weeks ago and it just seemed as though um, the, the approach of adding some guest parking was in conflict with the HOA documents. Um, but it, nonetheless, it doesn't take away from the practical need for something like that. When I see these projects, I think about, well, gee, if you have like six people over with cars, six, eight people, you know, this can put a cramp on your social life, limited mm -hmm. parking. Mm -hmm. So, um, uh, Nick, as you were just um, kind of toying with moving the fence, the pull fencing down, you were not thinking of pulling another bench off of the driveway for guest parking, were you? I wasn't. And I, I think that that would have aesthetic ramifications that would not necessarily be good. But, yeah. um, you know, in, in, in the kind of bag of tricks that finishes these things off in terms of practical need, it, the, the uh, closer down to the street uh, turnouts are just like de rigueur. Yeah, I, I don't know how one would function other than chaotically people pulling their cars at different angles at the end of a cul-de-sac or not, not sufficiently off the street. Anyway, I'm just in support of what Tom was just saying. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, John. I, I have uh, one more. Yeah, uh, Robert. Question. Yeah, I, again, this patio area off the master bathroom, uh, that is up above the grade level quite a bit, uh, at least four feet, if not more. Mm -hmm. uh, so are, do you have a railing around that edge? We do. It's not called out very well, but we call out a plus three foot six high glass rail that okay. would be along this corner. Okay. All right. Yeah. Well, that may be a way you can screen that. I was wondering that too. Yeah. In some way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Any other questions for the applicant? Nick, thank you very much. Um, discussion you. from amongst the committee. Well, I'll be the first to start. I think it's a, a, a very handsome project. I think the we brought up a number of issues that aren't deal breakers, but things to be finalized. Um, but I'm in favor of this project and, and in favor of the administrative mon mon minor modification for the height projections and the projection of the end of the stair hallway into the side yard. And, and Mr. Chairman, the, the items that, that we did bring up, uh, those could be addressed by staff uh, with the architect planning developer. Sure. Robert, did you have a comment? I think I saw your hand. Yeah, no, I, I'm in agreement with you, Tom, uh, but I, I'm 
I'm not in agreement um, with the idea of the mirror uh, at the entry. And um, I, I don't think it's going to be uh, a successful uh, um, uh, element for the design. I think it's really going to be more problematic uh, given the heat and the sun um, at the entry. Um, and um, yeah, I think the, uh, the only thing is, as we craft a motion that we include the, um, the items that were brought up. And a, a side comment I have, I did a similar mirror on a house that I owned a couple of years ago. It scared me to death as I'd walk up to the front door and see myself. <laughs> I tore the mirrors off after 24 hours. <laughs> Yeah, I wonder if you could get this a similar effect with some kind of a reflective steel, um, a similar look without sort of having that uh, pure reflectivity of uh, of the glass here. I think there's so many mountain views around it to try to create one isn't really necessary, and I think the reflective issues with the solar, especially, probably would outweigh the trick factor of having the mountains reflected in that little yeah. entry yeah and potentially the you know when houses do get built across the street you could have some real bad reflectivity problems yeah. depending on sun angle yeah. any other comments from committee members somebody ready to make a motion Well, I'll, 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 I'll move to approve um, uh, with the uh, following conditions. The, uh, the uh, height uh, is okay, ex uh, extending to 21 feet. Um, the mirror is uh, not approved. Um, I think the correction of the uh, eucalyptus, um, I think the um, providing better access for the pool and uh, pool service, as well as potentially an entry uh, from the driveway to the front door is, uh, is uh, beneficial. And um, what else? I, did I forget something? Guest parking. Par yes, uh, guest parking. Uh, the addition of a pull-off area um, for some additional guest parking. Thank you, Robert. Do we have a second? I'll second that motion. Second by Tom Dossie. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, thank you. Nick, thanks again. Thank you, guys. Okay. Now we're going to go back to the beginning of our agenda, which is the unfinished business item number three, DJL of the Desert Inc for a major architectural review application to construct a one-story, three-unit apartment building on an undeveloped 10,200 square foot parcel located at 517 South Mountain View Drive. May we have a staff report, please? Yes. Can you see the screen? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Give me a second. All right, so everyone's kind of seen this already. Um, the lot is approximately 10,000 square feet. It's undeveloped, it's relatively flat, and it is pretty much surrounded by existing um, single, no, I'm sorry, multifamily uh, units of the same size. We've got um, the lot here outlined in yellow um, near the corner of Ramon Road and on Sound Mountain View Drive. Right? Again, as mentioned, um, the, uh, the proposed apartment complex is surrounded by very similar apartment complexes on the west, south, and east side, and a vacant lot on the north. Originally, this was what was proposed. Um, they are still proposing a three-unit apartment complex, one story, and seven parking spaces, um, with, of course, trash enclosure and landscape. This is what was initially uh, um, submitted with their initial elevations um, because of comments and just revisions um, going through ARC, they came up with this design. Um, 
on in February, there was more, there were more um, suggestions from ARC, which had a lot to do with like shifting the building um, to kind of create a better distance between the parking area and the build and the, you know, the apartment structure, screening the gas meter, enhancing the landscape around the building, um, providing locations for wall lights and, you know, an adequately drawn trash enclosure and more illustration on the front elevation. So with that, um, with those uh, comments, the applicant has resubmitted. So this is their new site plan. They've added more landscape around the building. Um, you can kind of see that they've also uh, provided a more adequately drawn landscape plan uh, that consists of the quantity and the size of the plants. They're continuing to um, use solar on their on their roof, and they've added uh, more details to the front of their building. So they've got you know the white stucco, they've got the gray trim, gray uh, shingles on the roof, and they have um, screened uh, uh, sorry screened gas meter and wall wall lights as well. So this is um, an elevation, uh, sorry, a rendering of what the finished building will look like to some extent. And staff is recommending approval um, subject to the conditions of approval. That concludes my presentation and the applicant is available for any uh, comments. Thank you, Alex. Does anybody on the committee have questions of staff? No questions of staff. If the applicant would like to give us a presentation, please state your name and uh, describe your project. Hello. Hello, hi, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Hi, uh, my name is Nader Iskander. I'm the designer for this uh, project. Um, I'm so pleased to be uh, in front of you guys. Uh, it's my first time to be here. And um, it's my pleasure because I feel uh, <laughs> I feel more important when I see you guys. It's, <laughs> a, lot of, <laughs> it's a lot of experience. I'm still learning, and um, this uh, this project has um, came to our uh, company for um, mm -hmm. um, um, redesign the the previous um, design, and we try to um, follow all the instruction from the planning department and from you guys at the, at the last meeting. So uh, let me share my screen with you, if I can. Okay, so uh, we didn't do a much change on the floor plan. I, I'm gonna talk about the floor plan later, but the most um, um, comment was for the site plan and the um, uh, landscape plan. So um, the last comment was about um, pushing the building back to have like a five feet uh, uh, walking way uh, in, 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 the, in the back of the parking lot and uh, two feet for um, the planter around uh, the building. Sorry, I didn't get that. Did somebody? Did somebody no, say? I think you can just continue. Uh, okay. So we provide for. I'm sorry for the noise. We provide four parkings uh, in this side and uh, four parkings in the, in this side too. Uh, so two e two parking for each uh, unit and uh, uh, one parking uh, extra for uh, handicap and another extra parking for visitor here. Can you, can you guys see my uh, my mouse when I point out? Yes. Okay. So also the comment was uh, regarding the um, uh, trash bin. So we got the enclosure for the trash bin uh, 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 bigger than before like this. And we also um, make the, the exterior finish uh, matching the exterior finish of the of the building. And also we put um, um, the trash bin uh, per uh, uh, current code for the um, 
for the requirement for the um, composed uh, material. And also we uh, uh, put some uh, planting uh, uh, planters in on the front of the enclosure. So it, lo it may look nicer uh, because it's facing the street. And also we keep the separation between the, the properties with, with a planter here and in the other side, this side. Let me uh, put then the other side. Uh, so planter, planter here as well to separate the other uh, uh, line, uh, property line. Uh, also, the comment was regarding the, um, uh, the screen uh, uh, covering the gas meters. So we make a, a screen here to covering the gas meter. And also for the um, um, uh, enhancement, the, the, front, the front elevation, we put uh, uh, windows like this uh, uh, and make it symmetrical. So when you look at it, you will see the, sim the, the building is very symmetrical. Um, and also in the backyard, let me um, put the plan up. Sorry. <laughs> Okay, so um, uh, we also put in, in the back uh, a decomposed granite with uh, with a grass. We don't we didn't put much uh, too much grass because it's a, it's a very huge backyard and you know need to take uh, water. <laughs> Uh, so uh, we put decomposing as we, the owner is open to to do any um, other ideas if you guys want to change this uh, 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 landscape for the backyard and um, so uh, here's the floor plan for the um, uh, the site plan I mean sorry for the parking showing the parking showing the entrance um, and let me show you this is the the landscape the final it looks like you still have the perspective of the front showing oh really sorry about that let me let me try to look. oh okay so can you see now the autocad file yes okay so um uh, this, sorry about that. So uh, the, this is the parking. Um, this is the the um, landscape uh, site plan. Um, this is the four parking here, and this is the handicap and the visitor parking. Uh, and this is the distance, the five feet distance. You will see it on the site plan here. We put all the all the dimension per the previous uh, comments. And this is a screen for the uh, meter, and also. Oh my God! Yeah, I feel bad for you, the kids. Are, I'm are you... really sorry. My my wife my wife is a pharmacist, and she uh... she has a night shift today, so I had yeah. to stay with the kid. I'm hey, yeah, no problem. If you need, he's to get two to years that... old, and he started uh -huh. talking. So guy <laughs> wants to join you. Yeah. yeah, if if you need to grab them, that that's fine. <laughs> I'm sorry. He's, no problem. If, if he if he ask again, I will open the door for uh -huh. him. <laughs> He's a troublemaker. He locked him in a closet or something. Yeah. No, I locked myself in the closet. I got you. <laughs> All right. Okay, let's go. Hey, Jay. Okay. Okay, come say hi. Hi. Right. Hey. Hey. Hi. Hello. <laughs> The poor guy. Go play with your brother, please. Okay. Okay. I, I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. I'm. Uh, hey, no problem. I'm really sorry. Okay. So here's the fl the floor plan for the three units. So t t basically, the 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 left unit and the right unit is 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 exactly similar. The the middle unit is the is a little bit different, but it's it looks similar too. 
and uh, it has also um, a, a, a door here to the backyard. And each each unit has a door also to the side yard here. So um, this is basically the floor plan. So the elevations was uh, the last to comment on the elevation that we need to provide the, the light and uh, the, exact, the exact dimension of the light and look. So here's the, the here is the light we're gonna use on the uh, on each um, on each doorway or each uh, entry door here, and also this is how the screen. I try to get as much as a closer look for the screen, but for sure it's gonna be <laughs> looks nicer and better than this one. Uh, but this is basically how it's gonna look like uh, to screen the. Uh, the, the gas meters, uh, which is located here on the front of the building. Um, so uh, pretty much this was it for the comments you guys have last time. And um, I think um, I finished my presentation and I really sorry about the, the kids. <laughs> Nader, thank you very much for your presentation. Um, are there any public comments from the audience on this particular project? <laughs> he has comments. <laughs> he doesn't like what he's like. Okay. Are there any questions from the committee for the applicant? Uh, sure. Robert. Um, yeah, a minor thing um, on your your electrical plan, uh, it doesn't reflect uh, any of the lighting along the side yards and how it's switched. So that may be something you want to look at, but I'm, that's just a little pointing out something to you. Um, uh, this 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 is the front light. But see yeah, but you've, you've got a bunch of them along the side yards uh, off of the sliders of where the living room is. On um, the elevations, they show up, but not on the plan. Uh, okay. I yeah. will... Small thing. Um, uh, just a comment. You're showing those lights as well as floodlights at the entrance. And what's the, what's the rationale behind having all of that lighting? Uh, on, on the front elevation, you mean? Yeah, on the front, uh, by each entry door, you have a pair of floodlights in addition to the wall, the wall mount. Well, uh, I believe it's originally was only the wall mount and we add the, 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 the two light. I think the two light in both sides of the door will be enough. So I think I'm gonna el eliminate this, this one. So yeah, I would, I would uh, suggest getting rid of the, the, um, the, the wall pack with the two lights on it that's on a motion sensor. Um, okay. I think it, I think, um, yeah. Oh, uh, there you go. <laughs> it's gone. Um, and then the other thing, um, my other sort of comment and question is, uh, during the whole uh, evolution of this project, um, the whole front originally started with a lot more landscape area. And we're now left with a little two foot um, planter along the front of the building and just a tree well in the middle. And it seems to me that there's a lost opportunity uh, to get more landscaping and to create more of a garden kind of buffer from the street, which is pretty, you, you know, from the street, you've got, you've got parking and you've got concrete and you have building. And it seems like there's an opportunity to get a more of a landscape buffer there. And with laying out the court area, as chain, making some changes there, as well as maybe reducing the sidewalk to four foot instead of five, and you get a three foot planter in front, it'll give you more opportunities to get larger plants and a wider variety of plant material. So is that something you'd be open to? Yeah, definitely, definitely. I like this idea. And, and the, the previous design, not the very original one, the, just my previous design was, uh, it has was, it, it has only three feet sidewalk, but you are right. We need to enlarge this two feet is too small for the for the planter. But the only thing I don't want to push the building back more no. because it's yeah, it's gonna be very, very far away back. And also the, the, the backyard will be too small for three units to 
enjoy their backyard. So yeah, no, I, I don't think you need to push the building back any further, but uh, this is a private sidewalk. And I think you could certainly get by with four foot wide instead of five and then turn the extra foot into planting. Okay, it's, it's yeah. definitely, definitely doable. Yes, definitely better. Uh, and, and generally, I think the improvement to the elevation is, is, has been great. Much, it's a much, much better looking building. Thank you. <clears throat> Thanks. Thank That's you, all I have. Yeah, I had one comment. Um, I think I'm looking at the front elevation and, and I'm wondering if you need to have some kind of a overhang, um, a bit more of an overhang over the entry doors. Um, it's going to be, that's facing east. So in the morning, it's going to be pretty hot. Um, I'm wondering if um, if you could benefit from a, some kind of a shade structure or extending the roof out um, to give a little bit more, um, you know, sun coverage over those entry areas. I would love to 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 add the roof uh, or continue yeah. the the back roof to the front or even do like. A, um, um, a shade on top of this, but I think if 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 I change if I change the ridge of the roof to the middle of the of the whole building and extend this gable roof to the front, it will it will be good too. So I like this idea and I agree with you. Steve, anything else? Yep, that's it for me. Um, following up on that, I would be careful that it doesn't turn into one monolithic roof. I like the fact that the unit in the middle is set back somewhat and the roof does jog back. It might be a consideration of just a wooden trellis that connects the front doors of unit one and unit three that fills in that gap, but doesn't add height to the roof, but adds some shading potential to the walkway and to the windows of that middle unit. Okay. Yep. All right. So just an open, like um, um, open gazebo or? Yeah, trellis. So yeah, some posts and beams. OK. All right. I have, a, a, I have a question, question for staff. Um, what is the rear setback for this property? The rear setback? Yes, required setback. The required one? Ooh, I want to say, well, they're proposing 29. Um, the required one, I'd have to double check. Typically, it's 10 feet. Then I was going to say it could be as low as 10. Yeah. I, I mean, uh, I feel that, um, that the building could be moved back further. Uh, there's not a lot going on in that rear yard, and that would just give it some relief from the parking area. Um, the second comment is I'm not sure I understand the panels of DG in between the grass and Those you know panels. how yeah how that, how that works or, or um, is it artificial turf or real grass I, I don't know how you'd irrigate it uh, the way it's designed properly yeah, yeah it's just a decomposed the granite or or might be a concrete uh, beavers big beavers so just to reduce the amount of grass, so we we don't use too much water. And, uh... but, but what you've done is created a lot of small turf areas that are difficult to irrigate mm -hmm. and would require many sprinkler heads. And then thirdly, if you if you look at the patio areas on the on the end units, it shows the concrete going all the way to the perimeter wall. Uh, if you pan down uh, to like unit one or unit three. Mm. Now this one? Yeah, there, there, there's no relief. So if, you know, there's concrete right up against that wall. And, and I think there should be, you know, uh, a, a planter between the wall and the concrete where you could at least get some vines or landscape material, um, you know, as people go out there on that patio uh, that would soften the wall. And then on, on the uh, near unit number three, is it necessary to continue the front walk all the way to the perimeter wall? Could it, could it not end, you know, just a little bit past your gate 
where you go in the side and that rest could be landscaping. If you pan up a little bit, you'll see the area. Um, up the opposite the front yard. Sorry. Yeah. If you keep, see right there um, where your gate is, there's no really reason that that concrete has to go all the way to that wall. That could become landscape at the end of that uh, walkway, just past the gate. I, isn't that the same on the south side also? Well, yeah, they might need that for yeah. more trash. Exactly. The reason, the reason I did that because there is, there is a, a, a sliding door here in the living room. So this is the only exit from the living room uh, or near to the kitchen. So the people can go out mm -hmm. and uh, throw their trashes, see? The trash, they, they can go out from here. That's why I extend the concrete all the way uh, behind, exactly behind the, or like one foot behind the um, uh, sliding door. So they can go out from here and go inside the trash enclosure and throw their trashes. Same, yeah. thing, same thing on the other side go, they have to walk on the concrete all the way. Plus also this, this pavers or uh, uh, the granite, is for them to go out if they want to go to the backyard. So this is the only pathway to the backyard. Yeah, I, I think it's it's not so much it, it's uh, the concrete that's up against the wall, the perimeter wall. Yeah, it, that's the issue, right? It's just this like concrete jungle back there with no relief or planting. The view out there is going to be pretty sterile. Yes. Mm -hmm. And like where you have B. That that concrete could end. I mean, it could. You could pull it back towards the building. Two feet. Oh, okay. So like three feet. From from here, three feet. Well, from, from, from the, the perimeter. perimeter wall towards the building. Oh, okay. And get some landscape vines or something along the wall. Okay. So, but I will need three feet uh, in, in front of the building so people can walk. So it's, I, not, it's not so much that. Um, if I moved it, okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, there you go. Well, like um, now I moved it three feet, so I will have, yeah, I think I will have enough here. Yeah. The same with on the east side of that fence and gate is what Tom was initially saying, though, on at least at this north end of the of the frontage. Yeah. That, that line can extend right through. Maybe it's two foot six. Uh, but mm -hmm. Tom, does that sound right? Yeah, I mean, where he's drawn it now, he doesn't have to cut it back that far, but just enough to get mm -hmm. some. Just, uh, just like two feet? Two or two foot six. Inches. Yeah, off the wall. There you go. That could be landscaping. And then... Okay. But again, I still think the building could go back at least five or six feet. Um, well, still, is, yeah, thirty foot is a big backyard. See, sir, it's it's already it's already from the front uh, property line. It's already twenty six feet back. So if I moved it six feet more it's going to be 32 feet back. So it's going to be far away back from the front. Which, which is awesome which in is terms of getting landscape and softening the, the impact on the street and creating a building that's visually much more appealing. So, yeah, committee, I would also just indicate that the, the Planning Commission has already kind of established the site plan. The other thing that is also of note is the applicant is reserving that rear space for ADUs in the future, which will provide additional housing. The, the owner is, is my, might uh, propose an ADU in the future. So that's why also he, he wants a space in the back. But the staff is certainly happy to work with the applicant to reduce okay. that walkway where we can create landscape pockets on the edges of the site, as well as where um, that northerly walkway is adjacent to the parking area. Okay, thank you. Okay, committee, any other comments or discussion? Do we have a motion?
You might you might be able to mute that now. I'm trying to. I'm sorry. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> That's all right. There you go. Um, I, I do do have a, a couple comments. I think you know until these ADUs are proposed, um, I would like to see some additional trees in the backyard. You know, for shade. Um, they have a couple citrus trees and you know a thirty foot space. Uh, I think it would soften it, create a better buffer between the rear neighbors and provide a better setting. Yeah, I'm, um, I'm okay with that. I, I can provide more trees in the back. Um, as, um, so if there is a certain number of trees you guys recommend or just maybe Three, three more trees because I have already three big trees. Yeah, it looks like there's three citrus trees, so a, a couple canopy trees would be fine. Canopy trees, okay. Th three more? I, I think you could get by with two or three. <clears throat> you might even be enough. Okay, <clears throat> no problem. Any other comments or questions? We covered it. Do we have a motion? Um, Tom? Uh, well, I was, I was just going to make one more comment that okay, yeah, to have staff, you know, review the layout of the turf along with those areas of decomposed granite to make sure it's it's feasible and able to irrigate properly. Yeah, I think that David totally understood the comments the committee was making about that sir. So if, if the staff could work with the applicant, I think it can solve that without it needing to come back to us. Um, I'm willing, ready to make a motion to approve the project as submitted with the revisions that we discussed to the size of the landscape planners along the building in the parking lot area along the side property lines and the addition of two canopy trees in the back that are at least 30 inch boxes. And um, any other comments that I missed anybody? Oh, the removal of the dual head spotlights in the front. Any other comment, any other items that I missed? Do we have a second? A second. Second by Robert. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? No, thank you. Nader, thank you for working with us. Thank you so much. And I'm really sorry again about the kid. And uh, <laughs> and it, it was really my pleasure to be with you guys today. Thank you so thank much. Thank you. Thank you. Good, good luck there. OK. Um, we have two more items. To, does anybody need a, a five minute break, or should we march ahead? Mr. Nader, you can have to undo your screen. Oops. Ah, there you go. Okay, we're now new business item number four. William Eden, owner for a major architectural application for a three unit condominium development named Eden Palm Estates located at West Via Oliveira Drive. May you have a staff report, please. <clears throat> uh, are you able to see the whole screen? Yeah. Yes. Or should we swap? Is that better? Either way. Yeah. No. There we go. All right. So um, as the Glenn, chair read into the Glenn, record, this pardon? Either way was better. This is the two screens. Oh, sorry. <laughs> we'll swap. There we go. So as um, Chair Jackway mentioned, read right into the record, the uh, the project that we're looking for before today, the planning, uh, just to orient everyone where the vacant lot is, it's at the corner of, uh, almost at the corner of North Palm Canyon Drive and West Via Oliveira with uh, vacant lots uh, currently on all sides of it, except uh, on the north end of Via Oliveira. The Planning Commission reviewed this project. Uh, they approved a conditional use permit. They approved the tentative track map for condo units. 
a major development permit for the construction of the three units. And they had a approved an administrative minor modification for some setback reductions and we'll go over that. Uh, and then they um, recommended to the ARC approval. When the Planning Commission made their recommendation, they asked that two things be changed or revised. Uh, one is that the trash enclosure that they uh, proposed, the gate swung <laughs> out into the, um, the sidewalk. Uh, the applicant has revised that design and we'll look at it in just a minute. Uh, and also that the California fan palm be a Washington fellifera and they've changed, uh, revised that landscape plan. So just to give some background information, the project has a split zoning, meaning that uh, right down diagonal through the property is uh, the property zone C1 and R2. And there are different height and setback standards for these two lots. So the applicant has used this uh, to his advantage to provide a very unique project where the C1 properties are two stories and the C1 or the R2 is a one story. Uh, and different setbacks that go with each of those. So there is a uh, illustrate, illustrative drawing of how this works with the two story portions on this R, the C1 zone, and then the one story on the R1, um, so the, R, uh, the C2. Um, so items to point out in this drawing, the trash enclosure that uh, the planning commission saw is this design with the gate that swings out into the sidewalk. So this has been revised and we'll go over that in just a minute. Uh, and then there are carports that are included over the seven parking spaces. Uh, and that is a requirement of a condominium complex. They need to provide covered parking where in the previous plan was uh, rentals and that was not required. So in your packet, there are drawings showing uh, different angles of how the uh, buildings will be constructed. Um, the Planning Commission reviewed a adjacent property uh, uh, proposal was for a new 100 room hotel um, that has not come before ARC, ARC yet, but uh, we wanted to make sure that the Planning Commission was able to see how this project related to that project. Uh, and that's what this drawing is showing you, cross sections of buildings to the east and buildings to the south and how the parking lots and the buildings related to each other. So again, this cross section shows uh, West V Oliveira through the property north south showing the carports, the buildings, and then the relationship with the proposed, this says apartment building, but it actually is a hotel um, to the south portion of the vacant lot. There is a tentative track map grading plan that's in your pro in your packet. It's a flat lot basically that goes from uh, Via Lavera to the back. Uh, one thing that is required for when the project is developed is a uh, dedication of 25 feet to Via Oliveira. Let me go to this slide here. So the yellow line shows where the new property line will be after the street dedication. So the red dash line is where the property line is now. It'll be moved back. And when we uh, allow that, uh, when the city does take that property, it allows us to uh, justify a setback reduction to 15 feet to allow the applicant to build these carports. So there's a cross section that shows where in Via Oliveira the property line is with the 25 foot dedication uh, and then the new property line with the setback for the carport. The planning commission reviewed this plan and I wanna zoom in on uh, the crash enclosure here that showed the gates that swung out. Uh, a member of the planning commission felt that that um, is not always optimal when the gates are left open if there's not because it's a three unit complex there may not be a gardener who would take the trash out or uh, some maintenance person uh, most likely would be left up to the residents to do this uh, and they felt that they didn't want the gates open blocking the sidewalk so the applicant has revised the plan to show the trash enclosure basically flipped so that the gates face the development and not uh, open into the street. So of course that alters the design of the 
trash enclosure, which will now be CMU block and not the decorative gate that we had shown in some of the electric. So the project, as I mentioned, had a major development permit. Um, the planning commission gave that direction to the ARC uh, and that's the gate is here that um, has been revised. You can see it here. Uh, but the building materials include Angelus block, uh, wall, uh, veneer, plaster, cement plaster and various, uh, this cream color and then an orange uh, and then different fascias with overhangs, white overhangs, uh, a railing system. And I'll have the, the applicant is here and they will be able to describe this much better than I have, I can. Uh, there's a series of building elevations showing uh, building heights uh, for the two-story portions uh, and then how the front entrance relates to uh, the overall design. So the airport design is very simple. It's a steel post and cantilevered. They are proposing two EV chargers with four um, hookup stations, charging stations that will be uh, along the front for the residents to use. Uh, and that is shown in these, this drawing with the two EV chargers. Uh, there's a front gate here, uh, and then there are two water features on the entrance sides. Uh, the planning commission did have a long discussion about the water features, but ultimately uh, decided that they were, um, so once again, these are uh, drawings of the previous gate, which are not proposed today, uh, but there is a drawing of the, of the entry gate uh, and there is a little drawing of a sign that could possibly go here. Uh, this is not part of the, the signage, would be approved at staff level. It doesn't need to be or reviewed by the ARC, but uh, obviously you can always make comment. Drawings of the interior. The landscape plan, as I mentioned, uh, they where the red circle is, they change the uh, fan palm to a filifera. You'll see that there are, because of the nature of the design, there's a lot of, of space that that is hard, hard surface, uh, but where they can add plants and planters, they have added it with the two, three spools in the rear yards, uh, citrus in the rear, uh, and then planter beds along the front to uh, get green into the design. Uh, in the packet, there are floor plans, which uh, we can talk about and share that re ends my report and the applicant is here. Thank you, Glenn. Um, does the committee have any questions of staff? I do. Robert. Yeah, um, uh, Glenn, regarding this uh, street widening, so um, is the overall plan that Olivera is gonna be 50 feet wide? I don't think Rick right. It, it's twenty five and twenty five, but I mean the ultimate. That's the ultimate right of way width. But there'll be curb, gutter, and sidewalk, so the street won't be that wide. But the the edge of the right of way will be. So further, further um, east, there's uh, those townhouses, and they have developed uh, curbs and sidewalk. So whatever this project is, it will be in alignment with that. Is that right? Right, it'll line up with that, and then when the uh, uh, the proposed hotel project to the east comes online, that will all line up together. So it'll be from where the the nursing facility is out to Palm Canyon along Via La Vera will all be uh, finished. Okay. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, and one other thing. Uh, the, um, in the drawings, they show some signage. We're not reviewing signage uh, under this application. Is that right? Right, they would be allowed to have a sign and staff would evaluate that based upon the sign ordinance at that time. Okay, thank you. Glenn, I know that the setback for the column that supports the um, carports has been approved as a, as a variance. I'm wondering though, what is the city, what's the code's um, restriction, if anything, on projections into that setback of overhangs? Right, it, it, it meets the, the, so the, the setback line and then the projection is over top of the car itself. So um, it meets those standards. 
based upon projections over um, to the 15 feet at the setback. Okay, thank you. Any other questions of staff? Sorry, maybe just repeat that last one. Was that talking about the front park covered parking in the front setback? Yes, let me pull up the screen. Yeah. Right, so here's the new property line and the setback. is 10 foot six from the edge of the overhang of the cantilevered carport. When you say setback, do you mean the overhang setback, the projection into the allowable front yard? Right, so the post is here at 15. Which is over the setback, is that correct? At the setback line with the AMM approval. I see. Uh -huh. And then what is it? Seems, seems like something's missing from the diagram. Like what percentage is that encroaching that, to, the, to the edge of that eave of the overhang? Right here. I, I'm having a difficult time seeing where you're pointing, Glenn, but. Oh, I'm sorry. Am I not pointing at it the right way? You might be. I'm just looking at it on a small screen. Oh, okay. Sorry. Yeah, no, I don't see it either. Can you see now? I can see the drawing, but I can't see what you're pointing to. Sorry. Uh, mine just looks like a little hand. We're looking on the section drawing on the left side of the screen. Yes. The distance from where it shows the 14 foot to the column, what's the distance from the face of that column to the edge of the overhang? All right, can't get... Um... So you mean from the edge of the overhang to the property line? So, so let me just tell you, because I can verbally describe it. So, okay. so there's a new structural setback line, and it looks like the base of the battered column is on that line. And then, and then that sets up a new distance from that setback line to the property line. And, and I'm, I'm just curious what the percentages and feet and inches dimension of projection into that front yard. I'm partially asking selfishly because we, we project into setbacks all the time with overhangs, but this one looks unusually large in its projection. Into right, and, and one of the reasons why this is, this is being supported is because of, it's such a great reduction of the, of, of the dedication of the street um, if if we didn't have to do the dedication, then this couldn't would have would could even be you wouldn't need the setback reduction if that makes sense. So um, this overhang is probably the car is sixteen feet long, so this may be a ten foot overhang. And is that allowable within the current code? Well, with the setback reduction and the AMM approval. It, it is. Let me and let me let me ask you a, a planning commission kind of question. And I some it might be none of my business, but are they? Um, is there any concern at all for what this sets up for the rest of the street and this parking? Is this are this now allowable up and down this street? Well, and this is what we should expect. Right, we have thought of that. I have at least that, the, mm -hmm. you know, we, you know, what prevents the previous project from coming in and asking for uh, cover parking? We get asked quite a bit about this parking situations. Um, this one is very unique that it it requires such a large dedication of twenty five feet, uh, and with the AMM, we were able to do that. When they first came in and asked, uh, present this project was apartments and the covered parking was not required. And then they reverted to con uh, condominiums. Uh, and that's where we had to work with them to find a design and a setback that would work to get these carports allowed. So it, setting precedent for others, possibly if 
there's such a large setback, um, uh, street dedication, and then a larger setback. Um, Glenn, I think you're breaking up. We kind of lose you every now and then. Yeah. But I, I have a question that is probably out of our realm, but why in the world do they need such a wide street dedication? There's so many streets in this town that are so wide that serve little teeny two block long areas. There's one right by my house. The street paving must be 50 feet wide and there's never a car on it. It doesn't make any sense that we just need to grab as much land for right away as we can when it then creates all these setback issues. Right on this street, there there would be some on street parking uh, in the design that we see for the adjacent hotel. It won't be all day parking like it is on the other side of the north side of the street. So there may be instances where there could be on street parking uh, on the south side of Via Olivero. Okay. Any other questions of staff? I have a question. Um, Glenn, when, when they do the uh, parking adjacent to the street like that, are they required to use decorative pavement uh, for the parking area? They're not at, at this time, but um, the applicant may want to score the paving or do some um, decorative uh, way of doing it that way, but there's no uh, other than like in, um, you know, a, a specific plan where they need to use um, decorative pavers. Can yeah, we see I think, actually that, I think we do actually have some requirements for bay parking. So we'll, staff, we can, we can take a look yeah. at that before this is. Uh, I, I, I thought I recall that, that, that when it comes off like that, the <clears throat> enhanced paving. Can we see that site plan um, one more time, Glenn, or can you just leave that up? Sorry, no worries. I'm doing here. being um, not cooperative tonight. It's okay. Well, while you're working on that, maybe. <laughs> Sorry. Continue. Okay, now you can see it. I don't have a specific question. I just want to ponder on it. So yeah. Tom, if you want to- It went away. Okay. Yeah, we can't, there we go. There, there you go. Okay, any other questions then? For, and we can come back, Sean, to you when, when necessary, but any other questions from the committee for the staff? Okay, the applicant, could the applicant please give us your name and a brief presentation of the project? Hi there, ARC, how are you? This is, uh, I'm Jeff Jurasky. I'm an interior designer who is acting as an architectural designer in this particular project. Uh, past client of mine, uh, we've done a number of projects down here in the valley, uh, and this is the latest, of course. Uh, he bought this piece of dirt uh, on a trip down from Canada, and we went ahead and put a multi-building uh, structure on there. He originally wanted to do apartments, uh, but obviously he said that uh, it would be much more beneficial to do a condominium situation here. Uh, I'd like to introduce Zaida Braun. Zaida is my architectural uh, technician, if you will. She drew all the plans and uh, she's going to carry it through um, through permitting. Uh, she's going to do the actual presentation uh, of the plans to you because she's much more technically adept than I am. Hello, uh, my name is Saida Braun and I'm the architectural assistant for Mr. Jeffrey. <laughs> I'm going to share the screen with you. So I'm going to address uh, can you guys see my screen? Is the precise grading plan? Yes. So when when we started working on this project, uh, we designed the project and we were going all the way to our property line and we were, you know, our setback is 25 feet from property line. And we were kind of already developed the project when we find out 
there was a 30 feet road easement. So we had to go work for uh, design and cut uh, the design by 30 feet. So if you see here on the precise grading plan, here is the, um, the 30, the 30 foot easement. This is the center of the street. And we cannot move, uh, make these parking, covered parking spaces more than 14 feet because then we will be encroaching into the road easement. We cannot build anything into the road easement. So we work with Glenn and the engineering department to try to make this work. And um, a parking, uh, cover parking spot for 14 feet overhang, um, it is code. Because usually a car, a car, a, a car uh, stall is nine by 18. So we designed, the, this has the old trash enclosure that was presented to planning. Uh, we're gonna, because this is a multifamily uh, project, we're gonna need an ADA accessibility to the project. So we're making this path to the ADA and we have in a van accessible aisle over here. We're proposing um, the ADA parking space here. And then it doesn't show in this plan, but we have the post here. And from the center of your gutter <clears throat> to the post is 14.6 uh, for the post. That's the setback that Glenn was trying to find earlier, 14.6. So, and right here we have, uh, we had added four EV chargers. And let me show you. And so as you walk in here uh, on the in, inside the property, um, Jeffrey designed uh, the front facade to create a little bit of romanticism and this modern design. He added two um, water fountains on the side. And then we uh, we added a, a gate here, you know, for privacy and to prevent people going, you know, undesired people <laughs> into the property. We're dealing with a little bit of a ramp, but we are under 5%, which we don't need railing. So we'll, um, you come into the property, this is the entry to one of the two-story units. This is, you come over here, this is the entry to the other two-story unit which is on the commercial part of the property, the split zone. And then you go to the right over here is the single story unit. So here is the landscape plan. Already revised with the trash enclosure. So uh, the planning commission was concerned about the doors opening into the sidewalk and obstructing the path of travel. So we did a little bit of revision here and changed the swing of the doors on the inside of the property. So it's still, um, it's still gonna have to be ADA accessible, but that way it gives each tenant, uh, you know, a trash enclosure. So they will, they will have to pull out their trash enclosures their trash bins one trash day and then they will have to pull them in. So I don't know which which is a better solu solution, uh, having the tenants pull the trash <laughs> bins or having the doors open. So I don't know. I mean, they can leave those trash cans there for days too if they're not in town. So the, the owner is planning to have a, an HOA and I'm pretty sure a property management. So here you can, you, Jeffrey, you can, do you want to explain the landscape here while I have it on? Well, the landscape is uh, uh, the arid scape all the way through uh, because of the um, condensing of our site development. We couldn't go with any big open spaces in between the units there. So it's basically just a, a singular line of boulder and arid scape uh, flanking either side of the uh, unit two entryway there. And then uh, some nice tall palms in the entry courtyard as well. They get up over the first level of the architecture. And um, the, the uh, unit two um, on either side of it, because these are individual buildings, has a walkway to the back that uh, a pool person or a gardener can go through to. 
and a series of gates that can uh, isolate what their function is. And uh, access to the spools uh, or the uh, brief lap pool behind unit two are part of that destination right there. But essentially it's an aridscape landscape against the south wall across the entire length is a raised planter bed with, uh, uh, I think we have agaves planted on those um, uh, regiment of agaves there along that back wall. The uh, green desert spoons. These are green desert spoons, yeah. Okay. So, and then as we move on the project, um, what do you think? Here is the, um, the, um, the light that is proposed for the, uh, for the um, cover parking. So uh, planning uh, was concerned about shooting the light to the street. So we created a, a light that will shoot towards the apartment building and will be placed at the edge of the cardboard. Uh, transformer most likely will go in this, in this corner, which conflict with Position we wanted to put our monumental sign, but we'll deal with that um, on a later submitter, submittal. Here is the section Glenn was um, showing before. Here is the center of the street. So we have an 18, uh, 18 wide one side street. Here is the other side. So the street is actually um, what is 30, 34 feet wide. So to the center of the gutter is 18 feet, and then we have a six foot sidewalk. So three feet uh, gutter, six foot, uh, six, foot, uh, six foot six sidewalk, which is the city standard. And then we have uh, 18 feet parking stall. From the edge of the parking stall, we have the overhang of the carport 14 feet. So you see here on the back of the, uh, of the property is where that um, hotel is going to be. So here you see we're going to create a little retaining wall because the grade is slightly higher on this side. And then we're going to do this corrugated fence, fence around the property. On the other section is, is cutting sideways. So on this side of the property is also the um, hotel is going that way where we have our residential part of the Oh, Sony. Here we have the old gate sign uh, on detail, but this is the front gate we're proposing. It's a five foot, a five foot tall gate with some uh, modern design. Uh, we're proposing to paint it white uh, so it can blend with the, uh, we have the Angelo's block uh, veneer on both sides of the, of the uh, water features. Here is the other section with the cardboard. I think you were asking for the proportion of the overhang here from the property line. Um, so it looks, here is uh, the proportion is 14 feet to five, to five foot is about 25% where it's from the property line. So it's a 75% setback uh, violation. Encroachment. Encroachment, correct. Um, so we also submitted a preliminary floor plan. So you can see that the unit, uh, this unit, it has a staircase over here. I uh, will go to a second. That's the unit two, that's unit three. So a staircase here, it goes to second floor with a master bedroom in a nice big master deck with <clears throat> glass railing around. Unit two is also a two-story uh, two story, uh, unit. Uh, it has a split stairs because above there is two masters. So we're coming on um, both sides and each one has a deck that lands onto the next unit. Uh, this is for um, code reasons, so we need escape so we created a little deck that lands into the next unit um, roof. We also, pro uh, we're providing a roof plan for your, um, 
for your uh, for your use. And here are all the key notice elevations. Uh, you can go back to the material board. I also provided color elevations. We're proposing the perimeter war walls will be low, about three inches. And we're proposing this white uh, mixed color angelus block. And above the, the pony wall over here, we're proposing a corrugated metal uh, fence with a dark paint color. And then the posts are gonna be also the same color. They're not gonna stand, they're all black or gray, charcoal gray. Then um, on the architectural block, we're proposing to do white a block veneer um, from Angelo's block, uh, regular veneer, I think is uh, eight by 16 long and a uh, very modern stack pattern. And then we're mixing the colors on the, with two colors on the plaster. We're proposing a, not a smooth finish, but a light dash finish. It looks almost like smooth. And on the fascias, fascias, we're gonna do a 12 inch fascia with a steel beam, um, like a hollow uh, steel beam painted on this, this um, charcoal gray finish. All doors were gonna be mm. uh, metal frames, metal doors. Mm, they have to be vented for mechanical rooms and we're gonna paint it uh, to match the adjacent walls. Windows will be the dark bronze anodized uh, aluminum with the low E, obviously gray tint uh, glazing. And then we're proposing here to have a glass railing continuously with a show, shoe, uh, aluminum shoe and an um, aluminum cap. That color will be to match the window frames, all, all dark bronze. And then I, pro I provided a couple of Revit files here. So you see how the perimeter walls uh, looks like in the fencing. Uh, a couple of views, like you can see here how the, um, the deck for this unit is. Here's the other escape deck that lands into this lower unit. And then the last pages are the uh, renderings. So you can see where the orange paint is allocated, the white paint in all the materials. And here is the aerial view. Any questions? Yes. Uh, well, I'll wait for Tom to dictate the Q&A. Yeah. First of all, thank you, Zeta. Um, yes, question. <coughs> from the uh, committee for the applicant. Sean. I think we do public first. <laughs> Hang on. Yes, you're right, public comments. Do we have any public comments from the audience for this particular project? Okay, we will now move to questions from the committee. If we do end up finding somebody from the audience, we will let them speak. Sean? Yeah, thanks. I've got one more question. Yeah, I guess the staff thing, one second. Uh, the questions for the applicant. Uh, the, the front carport, can you tell us about the design and why why that roof is sloped and the columns are, and it, it seems a little out of alignment with the rest of the design. Uh, Jeffrey is a designer. He wanted to do a, a steel frame uh, to mimic the I-beams, uh, the W flanches. So it will be more detailed, obviously, later on construction documents. But as you see this double thick line over here, and it didn't go very well, but you can see some depth over here. So these, and you can see some depth here. So it's to create a little bit more industrial look and um, mimic the uh, steel beams, the W flange. And this slope, um, I mean, he, what was the idea behind that, Jeffrey? I just wanted to basically do that cantilever and, and express a little structural integrity in the aesthetic there. What material is this ceiling on? on the carport? 
we're probably gonna end up using some standing seam uh, roof. On the ceiling, not the roof. Oh, on the ceiling, it will, um, it probably will do exposed. Um, uh, the rendering shows solid, but it's probably gonna have this exposed uh, structure, steel structure. So we can um, mount the lights at the end of the, of the canopy. What what do, you, what do you mean by what is an exposed steel structure to you? Uh, we can make it out of um, HSAs or W flanches. Uh, once the engineer, we have the engineer drawings, we can do that. I'm talking about the entire ceiling though, not just the supporting members. Like what is this? It's a sloped ceiling, so now everybody gets to see it. And, right. and what are we looking at? Does it does it have lights in it also? Yes, we're, we're proposing this light lunch. John, those are lights that are going to be uh, on the back side of the front fascia uh, right here. surface that shine backward toward the, the curb, uh, the front wheel curb. Um, but the underside is going to be solid. It'll be painted white. It's probably going to be as minimally thick as we can find. Just sheet metal, probably, or something along those lines. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the roof will be the sheet metal, and then we'll try to make it work with uh, uh, steel, steel tubes and W flanches. So it has that edge detail that he's looking for. So I, yeah, I guess I'm still confused about the ceiling material. Okay, I understand a structure for tube and wide flange, but I'm not gonna. I'm gonna move on from that. Okay. The um, why is the the cardboard structure white? And and can you flip to while you're thinking about that question? You the very last rendering or elevation you showed that was colored. Like, or the elevation. Go to the last slide in your deck there. This one? Sorry, I thought I saw a different one where the carport was a different color than it is there. I, I'm curious, you could stop there on that one if you like. Mm -hmm. It seems, um, like what's, what's the story behind the white for this when the it seems like none of the other walls, at least out on the street here, really are. Like this almost feels like a color where you haven't decided yet on the ceiling, the eave of the carport, the posts. Um, it's feels we, like you just we can, if the if the white is too sterile and too reflective, we can pick another color uh, and tone it down i guess that's why i'm asking is is it like how important is it to you but i, I think if, if that's your answer and jeff is that yours that you're it's not that important to you for it to be white well it is important because i was hoping to minimize its aesthetic effect on the elevation of the buildings frankly because i was trying to uh, rather than make them a statement right at the curb line i was still hoping the architecture would be the focus um, the vantage point that we're looking at here is a little, a little misdirected in that you're kind of getting in your knees in order to see this viewpoint. But when you're walking by, I'm kind of hoping these carports are more of a wafer that allows the architecture to still be seen through. And the idea was to make the carports almost disappear in the white crispness of the stucco color beyond. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like you're achieving that goal? Well, in my perfect world, uh, the carport shouldn't be there, but uh, that is the nature of the game here. So I'm not sure unless I make the, I mean, if we were to pick another third color or black or something like that, uh, we're now introducing a, uh, a little more demonstrative structure than I think I'd like. Can I question one more color? What, what's this, what material is the orange that I'm looking at on these garden walls or low walls that are just beyond this? Oh, those, yeah, those are the actual building walls. They're stucco. 
That's and a, is it integral color or is this a painted stucco? It's likely to be painted. Yes. Is that a budget yes. issue that's not integral and that it's painted? Correct. We're not doing a three layer stucco. We're doing a seven A cement plaster and it's a budget thing. Well, seven A is typically three layers. Right. So we can do a view, we can do integral color. I know the orange was, will fade and will have to be maintenance. So if we put an integrated color on the orange, at least it will help. I am not tracking that at all. So it is integral color or it is painted. I'm trying to see if this thing looks plasticky being painted or it looks like it's got some nice model finish. I leading the witness now <laughs> uh, it'll be it i would expect that the the color be the um the velvet uh sheen that dun edwards has which is just mm -hmm. a, a shade above flat um but sean the thing is it's the the, the richness of the color is simply going to fade so it's going to be painted at some point in time even if we go integral the integral color is obviously a better look no doubt about that I'm just not so sure how long the lifespan of such a product would be. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think that is the one question I had. Maybe you guys can answer it or staff, Glenn. The pool set back along the rear. What, 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 how wide is your planter along the rear property line? If you could go to your site plan. And can you mind zooming in on the rear yards on your landscape yeah. plan? Yeah, let me just get the, the sure. dimension on it right here. Gotcha. Oh. The dimension. Oh, oh, let me get you a dimension. So the planter is about 30 inches wide. Mm -hmm. From the pro, okay. From wall, that, wall clear, it will be clear from the face of the wall to face of the wall. How about from the property line to the pool side of that wall? To the pool side, okay. Let me get our dimensions. Property line, five feet. Mm -hmm. What's going on there just underneath where you drew that red dimension? It looks like your pool kind of jogs underneath the planter. What That's a fire feature on, uh, on the raised planter. Gotcha. Okay. It's centered on the rear door of unit two there. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. And then okay. we have a, an Eastman here. We have one foot e electrical Eastman in the back. So we're not against the property line. I see. Yeah. Hey, that's all the questions I had for now, folks. Thank you. Thank you, Sean. Yeah. Other members of the committee questions? I had a, oh, go ahead, Robert. Uh, yeah. So a couple of things. Um, can you talk to me about the, What's the thought for the scale and the of the water features at the entry? It seems for such a small area to have a 12 or 13 foot high water feature seems really out of scale for that small a space. Zaida, would you mind putting that? Uh, the, you want this the, one? The previous plan there, yeah. yeah. So Robert, what's going on here? These L-shaped structural elements <laughs> are, are are all CMU. So each building has a, uh, a bookending uh, CMU L-shaped structure that uh, the, the residential space wraps around. Uh, if you look at the floor plans in, in mass, you'll see that they appear on all three units uh, uh, several mm -hmm. times, uh, which allowed me then to play with the entry statement uh, coming from the street and if we have, um, uh, basically those are steps, of, uh, cascading steps of CMU uh, that are either tiled or waterproofed and the water just kind of trickles or cascades down uh, uh, and welcomes you as, you as you enter the property. And is it going into a gravel surface? 
Did yeah. I read that right? Yeah. The water disappears into a gravel surface below. Yes. So your pump is sub submerged below that. That's correct. Okay. Um, and then uh, on your uh, jumping to your entry gate, uh, you have a detail in your drawings, and it looks like the actual uh, because of the tongues that project uh, in each direction, it looks like you just have about two feet of clearance to get through one side of the gate. Uh, to me, that's a real uh, hazard. Um, if I'm understanding the how the gate functions, uh, uh, there is a panel on each side, which is fixed, right? Correct. So if you go to your left or the, what the, on the screen to the left, the elevation right. is not the dimensions. So mm -hmm. you have 15 inches of fixed panel on each side. You have yeah. two foot two clear, and then you have uh, 20 inches of tongues, you know, going in both direction. Yeah. So Robert, that's a, Robert, that's a good point. I didn't realize we're only, in my mind, we were opening both gates at the same time, which obviously alleviates your concern. But uh, if you only open up one gate and pass through, there's only two foot two available to walk through. Yeah, yeah. So I yes, okay. So we can change. Yeah, we can change the dimension of that zigzag uh, to uh, to something not as substantial. Even as a pedestrian gate, having something project into a walking service, I think, is not a great idea. Well, we don't want any fat people around either. So no, no, we don't. <laughs> no, yes, we do. <laughs> um, all right, so we'll revise this to have a little a minimum of 36 minute clearance. Uh, it's ADA, so we're going to have to do that. Yeah, all right. Um, and then um, I, I, I'm having a little trouble also with the amount of landscaping and the type of landscaping you're proposing for the front of the building as a buffer between the living room windows and the carports, you know, it's they're right on top of each other. And it seems like if you're in your living room and you're looking out at the front of a car or a car pulls in, you know, it's, I, I think you wanna rethink the kind of landscaping uh, that you have along the front of the building to give a little bit more buffer. I'll just leave it at that. Um, uh, and I think you were probably going for some more architectural kind of geometric approach, but I don't know that that's really a good approach here. Um, and then uh, two more questions. Uh, accessing the pools for the pool service. So you come in the gate and front entry gates and you go either to the right or the left, and then you're crossing you're crossing a planter area between a pave to get to some stepping stones. So what's is that? What's happening at that planter area that you have to drag your equipment across to get to the pool? And that, that's on you know at the front of the, the unit too. I'm talking about. Yeah. Right, here. right, here. right, right there. Yep. Right there. Yeah, I think uh, units one and three, the access would be around the outside perimeter of the building. But as far as getting to unit two and the equipment there, um, either go, we, there's two modes of approach. One is the one you're concerned about right here. Um, and the other one is walking through a series of gates to get to the middle unit's equipment. Uh, I guess that hasn't been worked out just yet. I think uh, it may be necessary to put a paved connection between the main walkway and those corridors yeah. we, we delivered. So a pool person servicing unit two's pool would then cross through the backyard of unit one to get to it. Is, is that what I'm understanding? Yeah, that was exactly, well, yeah, that's one of the two routes to get to it. Yes. The other one was to go into the interior courtyard and walk their way uh, left or right of unit two to get to their equipment. Okay, um, and then the last question I have is uh, on the west elevation of unit three, I think it is, mm -hmm. uh, you have something, um, some element that's not called out. Uh, it looks like it's a two-story high, I don't know if it's corrugated metal or some sort of fins, 
um, but it's on the two-story element. Yeah, I think you're talking about the fins that are basically a solar uh, filter for the stairway on the other side. Yeah, that's like uh, vertical blinds is what they are. So there's a window window back there? Yeah, there's a window behind that. Uh, uh, those vertical blinds basically shade the stairway that's two stories high there. Okay, all right. Thank you. Oh, one last question. What are you doing for solar? We're gonna, you know, code is changing January 1st, so we're gonna have to have solar there. Once we get the Title 24 requirements, we'll allocate the panels and the three roofs. Okay. So. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> and the question I had revolved around the roofs is I look at the roof plan, you're calling out an eighth of an inch per foot of slope. I believe code requires a quarter inch per foot. But the main question is, are you having gutters at the edge of these roofs or drains or does the water just gonna sheet flow down the fascia? We can work it both ways. I just did a project where I, I did a gutter along, along all the perimeter. Uh, or we can, oh, this detail is pretty neat because uh, we, let me see if I can. So what we do, we have a steel tube here that is gonna be exposed. And what we do, we put a, a little piece of steel on top and then we can, we can stop, uh, start sloping the roof. Mm -hmm. So when the water goes, it comes here and then it comes here. And then here we put a drip. So the water will come here and drip. That's one detail. The other option that we haven't think about it is gonna be based on budget and what the client you know, has in mind is to create a gutter here. So the water comes over here, but because we have all county levers, we have to put a drain in each corner and try to route it on these, these walls in here. So that's the other option, but this is gonna require obviously more steel, more money. So we can go, one, once we are there, we can do either one. And part of that consideration I think is all of these big roofs and all that water are draining into very narrow walkways and to very hard surfaces. So there's gonna be a real issue I think with water flowing through those narrow walkways between the buildings. Right. Um, and so I think your site drainage is gonna be critical. If there's any way you could contain that water into roof drains that goes down into underground drainage, of course would be the prime way to handle it, but um, it's just something to, to certainly be aware of. Right, so all the other thing, if you see in the precise grain plan, we're retaining all our stormwater here in an underground system. And we have a big manhole here for access to empty that. So that's one of the requirements of you guys' requirements that we have to retain all underground. So when we design the, the grading plan, we'll have to connect all the side drainage to that vault over there. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions of the applicant? Okay, Jeff and Zeta, thank you very much. Let's see the committee discussion amongst ourselves regarding the project. Well, I'll start. I have a comment. Here it comes. Uh, Mr. Jurasky mentioned on the um, carports that he kind of wanted them to be almost part of the building or, or not mm -hmm. so uh, evident. And I'm wondering if they just came out flat versus having the, the tilt to them would help uh, that elevation that he was talking about where they would be look like they're just an extension of the building and a wafer type element. Um, I, I also think we need some additional landscaping on the sides of the building if they could introduce some vertical uh, type trees in the side yards and, and perhaps along the back uh, of the, in the planter area, uh, just to soften you know, some of those taller elevations uh, from the west side and, and on the east side of the structure. 
Thank you. John Walsh. Mr. Chairman, just a, a few comments and, and kind of an overview of it. First of all, I, I sort of salute um, th this effort at, this is high density multiple unit housing and it is ambitious. And I think you're, it's, it's um, a, a packed program that you're trying to get into a very limited space with a lot of obstacles to, to that happening. I worry about as this gets pulled into construction documents, things that seem sort of innocuous or like casual details now turn, turn into problems. A couple things caught my eye. Um, you know, the stairs might need a second look. I, I think there may be some head height issues and just their general layout with respect to winders, which are very difficult from a code standpoint now with the new codes to get that to work. Um, and and uh, unit two, I guess it is, um, to, it looks like to get the stairs to work, we have to kind of um, uh, ascend a couple risers to get on that landing and then we open the door and we kind of step back down again. So I, I just had questions about, about that. Conceptually, the, the thing that also I would, I would wonder about is um, you've got the largest outdoor private spaces at the rear there. And in units one and three, it is just the bedrooms that are taking advantage of that as opposed to your larger living room, dining room and kitchen spaces. Um, it's 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 it, it's going to take a lot of work to kind of get it all working all right. It it looks like it's lacking breathing space because of the um, intense program, and it could sure use some some simplification. Uh, that's it. And and I I also I I uh, was listening to Mr. Rotman's comments on on the fountains in front. I worry about the fountains in front and what kind of a lifespan they would have. Would would they be in it for a five year run or something? Yeah. That's Thank you, it. John. Thank you. Okay. Other questions or comments? I'm going to kind of add to Sean's concern about the carports because as you look at the clear story windows in unit one mm. and unit two they're almost right on the fascia of the carport so it's going to really be an odd uh, mm. experience inside the units as you're looking out those clear yeah. stories and if those clear stories remain i mean i love the way they surround that fixed center wall but maybe the clear stories need to be considered that the glazing is obscure or something so that you're not looking right at those um fascias of the carports um i i agree with everything that john walsh said it's an ambitious project it's got some very interesting design elements some very subtle design elements just seeing the way that the balconies on unit one or two lay onto the roof of of of, or one and three lay under the roof and number two. There's some really nice little subtle detailing, um, but the comment about working everything out as you get into construction drawings is something to really pay attention to. Quick, um, can, I, can I make a comment? Yeah, sure. The One of the things I might question also is the height of the carport it, and it, and I think um, Tom Dosi was alluding to this or commenting on something I had been questioning, which was the slope of the carport. That I, I don't know that the slope is achieving the wafer thin appearance or helping it. It almost feels like it's enlarging the elevation of the carport. Um, the height of it also feels like if that were a garage I was designing, I wouldn't design that for an Amazon truck. I would design it for a, a, a Cadillac Escalade or something, a large SUV to be able to fit in there. And and this feels like, going back to your clear story uh, challenge, maybe it could just be lower, maybe flatter, reduces the footprint and elevation of the, of the carport. I'm not sure. The color also seems very stark and bold <clears throat> in contrast with something that, that I feel like if we're trying to make it go away, it's very bright 
in its white color and sheen, particularly that shiny white ceiling that I, I'm just like, I'm not buying that the whole thing's made out of I-beams and tubes either. Um, anyway, it's, it's bugging me. Yeah, I, yeah, I have a problem with it too. And in, in this section, you can actually see the, the sight line out of that clerestory window above the wall. Mm -hmm. you're, you're looking right at the back side of that structure. If you... I don't and know it if you, looks and feels high there. Yeah, it um, does. So anyway, it's not a question. This is a comment. It'd be nice to I, reduce the height. Yeah, sorry, Steve, go ahead. Yeah, no, I, I think looking up into an open structure um, also, I, I kind of understand what you're saying, um, but if you do want it to go away, I think it needs to be kind of thin, you know, cleaner and, um, you know, and, and again, it does, I just think it feels a little bit alien. You know, it, it doesn't really feel congruous to rest, the rest of the, the structure. Because the rest of the structure is, is quite nice, so. Yeah, I don't know what the height of the sill of that clear story is, but if the carport were made thinner and could be lowered so that the top of the carport aligns with the sill of the window, that would solve a lot of issues. <clears throat> Other comments? Do we have a motion? Mm -hmm. I'm challenged with making a motion and and wanting to approve a portion of the project and wanting to review again another portion of the project and and so that challenge with me lies within wanting to approve the buildings but yet wanting to see some site elements and some other things uh, updated and represented update etc meaning like the gates some of the water feature questions that were brought up the planters along the front um how those gates now in their fixed side panels become shorter and what that does to the landscape i think there's there's some things here that may have a domino effect including the carport which i think needs a bit more um study that, that's an elaboration on what I was. Sean, I have that same mixed feeling that you have that the building seems really close and there's a, a lot of other things that need work. But I think because this project is such a tight, small scale of land and so much is going on, it really all needs to be approved at once because as soon as you move one thing, you're going to affect another. Mm -hmm. So um, I think I don't know that I'm making a motion now, but I think is what I would suggest is that this be continued and brought back to us with restudy of the carport and um, a lot of the different landscape and um, and uh, access issues that we talked about. Yeah, I think John Walsh's um, concern for stairs and clearances use it as kind of a while you're at it item. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So is that is that the is that the motion then or I guess it, it, it yes it could be the motion. It is the motion. Yeah. Uh, so chair I have a few things. So um uh, one would be the front gate change the dimensions uh the color design of the type carports the height uh, the uh, planters along the front of behind the carports, the front of the, the buildings. Also to add uh, ver landscaping on the sides, possibly vertical landscaping to soften the walls. Uh, and then once again, the carport design. And I would add to that a design of the fascia showing how the water is drained off the roofs. And, and well, it's your motion, but I would say something about the uh, the uh, water elements at the entrance too. I, I think they're 
uh, John's point that in five years they'll be inactive and will be an eyesore. So I think some other alternative should be explored there. Which, which, if I can just elaborate on that water feature thing, now that you've thrown sure. that one in there, the I felt like something much more subtle and subdued could still have a lot of impact in, in terms of a water feature um, and just not be as loud and, and attention drawn grabbing as the height of and, and the magnitude of what's presented there today. And I, I, think do... another, I think another thing to consider is as we get into a worsening drought situation, Remember a few years ago, all water features were turned off and they just sat there as ugly little. Yeah, yeah, know. I, yeah. I think, I think the water feature personally needs to turn into some sort of landscaping and, and just abandon that completely. It, it's a maintenance, it's a long-term maintenance issue. It's a, it's a water suck and it's, yeah. Can, can I, I just want to say something and comment on both Glenn's recap of, of what we were just proposing in terms of emotion. Sure, and please. In, including yours, Rotman. And so I just want to clarify, Jeff, that, you know, like Glenn Malacher's had, had a list and, and he said, you know, color needs to be changed and the slope needs to be changed. I don't, I don't, I wouldn't take it like that verbatim. What I'm saying and or suggesting, and I think the team here would agree with me, is that we're, we're asking for a restudy. You, you had a goal. We're kind of, we listened to what your goal was for this. And I don't think disagreed with you that it was a good goal. And we don't think it's quite that successful and we're asking for a restudy. But if we come back and it's white and you've got a good argument for why it needs to be white or this material needs to be that, then, you know, I think, I think that's we're we're open to that also, and and to me it's same with the water feature. If the water feature got reduced in some way, and it was you were really poetic about it and passionate about it, and it needed to be a part of this project, I don't. Then maybe we're buying that also. I think in its current form, it's a tough sell to this tonight's crowd. Oh, I got you. My my years on ARC, I've, I've got you. I've got your lingo quite well, so gotcha. not, not to worry. I'm not okay. discouraged at all. In fact, I'm, as far the discussions about the carport, if I can get those reduced down in height, and I'll work with Glenn on that, um, that would be spectacular for me. I, so I'm uh, looking forward to the challenge of fine tuning it a bit. And Jeff, that might include raising the plate height of those units one and two, six inches or eight inches to give you just enough to play with. Well, we get, you know, those ceilings are 10 feet right now and those orange walls are eight feet. So the only vantage point you would actually see the carport right now would be as you get into the bowels, uh, uh, back aways, I should say, uh, mm -hmm. in the house. Um, but if I can drop those carport lids down and play with the, the uh, slope on it, uh, we can achieve both what I'm trying to achieve and what your concerns are. Okay, so Glenn, um, can you help us or help me clarify where we are with a motion or how we're proceeding now? Right, so those, um, just to reiterate, so the, the look at the front gate, the dimensions, um, the planters along the front and other landscape issues with the, um, the planter beds between the parking, edge of the parking and the front entry, uh, uh, front walls, uh, and then add some vertical landscaping on the sides to soften the walls and in the rear, uh, and then the carport design. And I think the um, you've given him good direction. Yeah, and please add to that the design of the fascias, the steel tube. Oh, features. right, the, the roof, <clears throat> right, okay, and the water if that, features. If that is my motion, do we have a second? A second. Second by Sean, all in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. Any opposed? Great. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. And thank you, design team. We appreciate your input. Yeah. Okay. Can we, can we take a four and five. a half minute recess? I'll give you five. We'll take a five minute break right now. Yeah. It's a little before eight. So we'll come back <laughs> to two minutes after eight. Yeah. Great. See you in a few.
This meeting is being recorded. Okay, it is 8.03 and we are back in session for our last piece of new business, which is number five, Pinnacle Palm Springs LLC for a major architectural application for the construction of a 3,627 square foot house on a hillside lot and an administrative minor modification to, re to reduce the front yard setback located at 1711 Pinnacle Point. Can we have a staff report, please? Uh, excuse me, Mr. Chairman, I would yes. like to recuse myself from this uh, project as I've done work with the developer on previous projects. Okay, Tom, thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, are you able to see the screen? Is it full full size? No, it's not. We're seeing two. All right, let me split. Let me, uh... there we go. That's it. All right, so um, Pinnacle Point, um, the ARC and Planning Commission have looked at multiple lots in this 12 lot subdivision. Today, we're looking at lot one, which is in red, the red box, which is the very bottom of the hill. Uh, as you know, the entrance gate is to the, to the west. The um, lot two has been constructed. Lot three is under construction. Uh, and then there's three existing houses. Lot seven at the top of the hill at the end of the cul-de-sac has been constructed. Lot 10, I'm sorry, lot nine, the ARC has reviewed and uh, asked for a restudy and that is uh, in taking place. Lot 10 is under construction, I'm sorry, is finished and sold. Uh, and that leaves us with um, uh, some of the other lots are, are difficult to build on. So um, we're here to talk about lot one uh, and it is uh, Brian Foster Designs, which you've seen before. Uh, looking at a site plan, they're, they're proposing to construct a 3,627 square foot house on a hillside lot uh, with the pool uh, and most of the outdoor activities facing west, which is the mountain views. They're proposing to um, have a 15 foot setback um, so they're asking for a reduction of the front yard setback to 15 feet uh, for elements of the building, front portions of the building here. The garage will set, be set back 23 feet, which allows a car to be parked off the street and into the driveway. Um, there are some illustrative design drawings of what the house could look like. Uh, you'll see it's a, a gray stucco structure with a garage to the east uh, and uh, stack stone with the outdoor elements to the west. Uh, the landscape proposed is uh, minimal landscaping using Palo Verde trees, creosote, uh, barrel cactus, uh, yucca, and lantana. And once again, the building materials are um, shades of, of gray uh, with white uh, veneer stack stone. Uh, courts. Uh, building elevations, uh, the height of the building, the maximum height of the building is at, um, at 18 feet, which um, meets the zone standards. Uh, when staff first saw the project, we had them extend out the uh, west facing overhang to help with solar control. And we'll talk about uh, in just a minute about the great differences. So once again, there's a floor plan showing the garage, the great room that faces west, uh, which obviously will have a lot of heat gain. Uh, and they've added this six foot overhang uh, to the west to help with that. <clears throat> so as I mentioned, lot two sits higher up on the hill. Uh, there's an HOA open space uh, and then this dashed line here is the natural grade. Sorry, trying to get the hourglass. Uh, is the natural grade, which will remain. And then there's another um, retaining wall here that drops the house down to 5, 595, where the other house is 10 feet taller, um, sits higher up in the hill. This is common in Palisades where the houses uh, are terracing down the side of the hill. 
Pinnacle. I'm sorry, Pinnacle. <laughs> I'm getting my I'm getting my hillside developments confused. Yeah. We do so yeah. <laughs> totally different, Sean. Yes. Mm -hmm. Once again, this is another cross section showing uh, how the relationship of the the lots uh, work. Um, as you know, in past houses, we've looked at um, recessed lighting and what the lighting plans are. Uh, there are very few lights that face the the uh, wash or the, the Riverside County drainage area that's to the south. Uh, mainly, the lights are on the west side. That um, uh, there's no lot that's below it other than the houses that are on um, Avenida Sevilla. Engineering looked at the uh, the grading plan when it first came in and they asked for some revisions. Uh, when you come up the hill, the lot is semi-graded and it sits about 10 feet higher, the pad than the curb of the street. And I have some photographs that will show that. Uh, and then obviously there's a steep slope off in the back and engineering uh, had them relook at uh, how this, uh, these boulders and retaining would work for the pool deck. And once again, you can see how the, how the garage is somewhat um, sloped up to the garage door. Uh, just some pictures of what it would look like. They did extend this overhang, obviously it will still meet, need to meet Title 24 uh, with the heat gain on the, through the glass. Um, all will have this picket fence, which is currently used on the lots, the rest of the lots in the development. This is, you'll see a picture of it in lot two in just a second. Uh, so this is the uh, elevation change from the curb of the street up to the pad. Uh, and the engineering has them design this and will landscape it so that it keeps uh, stable. As I mentioned, the pad is fairly flat. Uh, it's already been graded a few years ago. Stone stack wall is the, the lot two wall. Uh, this is the front of the house of, of lot two. So landscaping will be similar. This is the house that, um, if you remember ARC, we talked about how this being very open and glass and um, there's apparently like that because they have not put shades into the glass. Uh, and then this is the situation uh, next at the lot two, which there's the stone wall, a CMU block, and then there's the metal picket fence that they'll use on this lot itself. Uh, this is the house that's across the street that's almost finished. The landscaping needs obviously to be improved. And Chair, um, that concludes my report. So with this uh, uh, review, it includes the setback reductions of the front yard setback uh, to 15 feet. Thank you, Glenn. Are there any questions from the committee for the staff? I, I have a couple of questions. Uh, well, the colors of the the material palette can can you just elaborate on those a little bit? And and you showed a slide of the house across the street. You showed a couple houses. One I believe is a house next door, and then the one across the street looked like it had a, a large percentage of the facade that appeared white in color. Um, but then then the other house where you commented that the owners had not yet put shades in the front glazing um that seemed more natural or more gray colors than the house across the street and i'm, I'm now i'm wondering as the most visible house from down below and and that avenue to seville lot a kind of peninsula flag lot across the street um, I'm wondering about colors and what's really going to be visible from this on this property and the project. Yeah. Right. Dr. So um, can, you, can you see the full screen here? Sure. So this is a, um, you know, and these colors, they all, they all are similar in uh, their shading. Um, this one is called reclaimed wood and metal fringe. Let me get to the, I'm, I'm not a, a color expert. Um, 
but these are all sort of similar. They, they look this color, but they end up white and kind of white looking depending on what side of the house. Uh, as we looked in those photographs, if you look at this photograph, this color seems darker than this color, which looks whiter. Mm -hmm. and that's what I'm worried about. Is that when, lighter. when you're there, this is a bright white. It's not, it's more of a grayish color. I see. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, the pad height, oh, sorry. Okay. Did you want to elaborate? No. Mm -hmm. So the pad height being 10 foot higher than the street, it, that occurs at the driveway also there's a 10 foot slope there no the slope is at the northwest corner of the lot is the greatest gotcha. and as it goes up the hill the slope yep. graduates and and we have alan sanborn on ready to speak about the grading plan yep is there an architectural site plan that shows a clear front setback line of the, I'm guessing it was a 25 foot setback and now what's, what part is violating that 25 and causing the need for the 15? I'm going to apologize and there you go. I'm looking at a tiny screen tonight. Just having Sorry. A so, um, this is showing the 15th. I don't know if you can see this hand. I can. No. Yeah. In foot setback. Um, so, you know, another 10, the, the house is in the setback. Mm -hmm. The 12, six is a wall here and 12, six is here. So, um, Zoning code allows for a hillside lot to have a 10 foot front yard setback. However, they're not asking for all of that, but they are asking for this front yard setback for the portions of the house that project into it and the garage is set back. Uh, and we have drawing show how the relationship between the front of the garage and the front of the house are. Mm -hmm. And why is that? It just because so they can use reuse the same floor plan throughout and not alter it is why the need for the setback reduction. Well, it is to fit the size of the house on the lot. Um, the other lots that we looked at have also had AMMs to reduce the front yard setbacks. Mm. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. That's all the questions I had. Thank you. Um, Glenn, it, it appears, not appears, it, there is a portion in the rear yard setback too where the master bedroom intrudes into the setback. So I, I'm assuming that needs to be added to your portion of the house that gets the AMM. Having a really tough time with the slides today. I'm, I apologize. <laughs> there you can see it. The bottom left corner of the house projects into the setback. Right here. Yep. You're right. And I'm not saying that's an issue. I just want to make sure we put it in the AMM so it gets it is, it is a 15 foot rear yard setback. And that's showing 13 feet. Any other questions of staff? Okay, if the applicant could give us your name and a presentation of your project, please. Hello, all. Scott Lyle here. Uh, Brian Foster fell ill today, so he's unable to make this meeting. But I have, uh, we have with us uh, Bill O'Keefe, who's the architect of record. Um, and of course, Alan Sanborn's on. Uh, Bill is calling in remotely, and uh, he does have his screen, but he's unable to share his screen. So, Glenn, if you could help uh, Bill out if there's something that comes up and we're just gonna go ahead and leave it up to, to you guys to ask us any questions and Bill and, and myself and I'll do the best we can to answer them. So I'll have uh, Bill. Bill, I don't know if you have any, anything you wanna add first at this point, uh, please feel free. Can 
you hear me? Yeah, we can. Okay, sorry. <laughs> um, first time I've done this with you folks, so forgive me if I for the flubber up. Um, so basically, as uh, Glenn described it pretty well, as far as what we were trying to achieve, um, I'm going to let you guys first, you know, make your comments and get your opinion on it. Um, we've tried to. Uh, the house isn't the re, you know we aren't we aren't taking the same model and putting it on every lot and just trying to reconfigure you know to get the uh, setbacks um, an AMM on the setbacks that's not really what we're trying to do um, it's just this was a particular design for this particular lot and as you see because it curves in on the lot that's why we have some architectural features then that one corner towards the uh, I guess northwest that sticks in. It's not really a major mass portion of the building. Um, uh, so that's what we're trying to do. It's not, like I said, the 20, like you mentioned, uh, Glenn mentioned the 23 three feet to the garage itself. So there's just some architectural elements that are pushing forward. Yes, the bathroom does stick in there a little bit, but uh, it's really some architectural features we're trying to enhance the house with that do that. And on the back, it's just a matter of keeping that bathroom and, and bedroom kind of squared up so that it's more functional um, is why that sticks in. Um, but as, as Glenn said, these lots, this is about the seventh lot, um, they all terrace and so we're kind of fighting the slopes and that's why we always push obviously the driveway to the portion that's the most level um, to the street itself. So feel free to ask whatever questions you have. Thank you. Okay. Well, before the committee asks questions, we would open it to public comments. Is there anybody from the public who's in a waiting room or audience who would like to comment on this project? It appears not. So now we will have questions from the committee <laughs> to the applicants. Committee members. Um, I have a question, and Glenn, if we could look at the roof plan, which is A3.1. Well, you can see it in this elevation view also. There's a long flat wall, the high 16 foot high wall that goes across the end of the living room, but a portion of it projects across onto the garage. So if we could look at 3.1, We'll see that. And I'm just wondering what the reason is for that higher roof section, that little rectangle in the upper right corner of the high roof to be over the garage. Is there something in the garage that's taller than the rest of the garage or is that just an architectural element? You want me to input on that? Sure. Okay. Yeah, no, what we were trying to do is, um, and we went back, th this is not the first design we'd submitted over to Glenn. Um, we actually went back trying to enhance the character so that all four sides had more overhangs and detail and they weren't a bunch of flat walls if you will and so that was the effort is just trying to create more shadow line and uh interest in the front of the building i think that's pretty evident from sort of the the rendering you know two and three that you were looking at um it's just a effort to create more depth so it's not just a flat facade so there's no feature underneath it it's just we're trying to create more interest to the uh, front elevation. Well, I think it kind of created less interest because it made that 16 foot high wall so long. If I could make a slight suggestion, if you took the northern wall of that portion that extension that extends over the garage and move it towards the street about two feet, could we see the 3.1 sheet there? If you take the portion that's over the garage and move it towards the street about two feet, right there, Glenn, down, down there, take that wall and move it two feet and extend it to the right over the front face of the, excuse me, extend it to the left over the front, to the left, my left, <laughs> the, yeah, over about six feet worth of that higher roof. So you get a layering, you'll then have part of the wall at 16 foot. This new wall I talked about, drop that down to 14 and a half feet and then keep your other pair at, put at 12 and a half feet. Now we've got three different stair-stepping parapets on the front that I think could be more interesting. And also you're showing a 12 foot six parapet 
that's between this wall we were just talking about and the street, but the parapet at the street is 12 foot six. So there's no reason for that parapet in the middle to be there. To save you some money not to build it. Unless that was just called out incorrectly. Well, if you follow it around, the 12 foot six is called out all the way around. So I don't, anyways, that, those are my only comments about the roof. Uh, Glenn, while, while we're on this topic, would you mind going to that rendering that sort of north Here. east to southwest view? Maybe keep going one more. The other front elevation from the garage corner. There. Yeah, I, I, I see what, uh, yeah. I see what Tom's talking about, and I think that's just an oversight. That extra little uh, twelve foot six uh, piece that we're talking about there, mm -hmm. I think that, that actually shouldn't be there. That was just a hiccup. Forgive me. So the the, the twelve foot six at the farthest point closest to the street is the correct one. That white one is is incorrect. Right. And you can see on these elevation views, if that corner that projects out over the garage were dropped two feet so that you've got a stacking effect of the roof, 16 foot, 14 foot, 12 foot, it could, I think, make that front facade a lot more interesting. Well, then the problem would be is the, uh, the element, the detail we're trying to create, the uh, stone veneer accent would then get crushed down. Hold on, I'm not talking to change that. I'm talking about the portion that's over the garage. Right there where Glenn's cursor is. Oh, you can't see it. Sorry. Okay. Well, wait a second. You're, you're, do you see my little bubble? Do you see my little circle that I'm moving? No. Or, no, we don't no. see your drawing. Okay. I've got, I, I have a mouse and I was trying to mark it, but it doesn't show. So you're talking that just that little rectangle that's above the yeah. garage? Right, right. Just bring that down? I, yes. I don't think that would be a problem to just cut that down two feet. And then bring the front towards the street two feet. So you've got a layering of the planes, both horizontally and vertically. Yeah, I see what you're saying, Tom. And I, I don't think that would be uh, detrimental to our design at all. Yeah, just, I think, yeah, just to comment. No, no, I, I think it has some value. Uh, committee members, other questions for the, I, Sean? Yeah, I have just a couple. So the on that same height, if that taller parapet is, I'm, I think that's the 16 foot parapet. Is that pop up well, that's above? The 18. 18. That's, well, that's the 18 yeah. from the. It, sorry, it 18. Looks, looks really large and oafy up there, and kind of out of proportion with some of the, the linear lines of of this house. Is is there any reason that can't be reduced by two feet or more? Well, well, we because that that section you're talking about covers the great room. So we're trying to keep the great room ceiling high. Um, what what so height room, is that great room, the ceiling? Well, the, the parapets, the ceiling, uh, we're always going to lose, we're going to lose probably four feet easily down to 14. How? How do you well, lose when you, when you get the, when you when you take the slope of the roof, you take the parapet, first you take the parapet, you come down off the parapet so the drainage all goes to the roof drain overflow drains. And then you take the slope of the uh, the minimum requirement of slope. We've already lo lost um, from the uh, yeah basically it's down to you know if you look at uh, a three one, you'll see that that drops down to uh, sixteen sixteen one in the corners and sixteen six at the top of the cricket. Um, so we're down to sixteen already. Um, so then two feet. minus and a foot of structure, of but then that's 15 foot, so it's about a 15 foot high ceiling? No, it's about a 14 foot high ceiling, because we then have to get the framing in, which is about two feet deep. So we can get mechanical through the framing. Oh, mm. got it. So, so the ceiling the ceiling is only about 14 feet. Damn. <laughs> which is to me ridiculous it could be like 12 but um i think you guys are gonna 
push back on that. Yeah, we 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 most of the buildings in this project are all 14s. Can, so, can uh, I ask a couple more questions? So, what what is the garage door material? Garage door material is stated on uh, in color. Three, it's, yeah, it's um, it's an aluminum door, and it's painted Modern Masters silver color ME 150, which is what we've used on the other buildings in the community. Which one's that on here? Uh, it's uh, actually it's it's not on that schedule, but it is it is listed in on A. 4.1 and A4.2. Can, can we just and see it in another it's, photograph, it's, Glenn? Sorry, I'm just. If, you, if Glenn goes to if Glenn goes to maybe one of the other projects, uh, you would see the same door, I believe. It's that color okay. there. Okay, Joe. Yeah, and that light gray that's being used on the on the um, I guess it's the west west wall of the house are you open to making that a darker more natural color well the, remember the west wall is the one with most of the windows i mean this this is this is the house the other house not is across the street so ours is facing west but actually if you look at the elevation on sheet a41 for the west elevation there's really not a lot of surface there that's actually the color you're referring to um it's most of it is uh, hmm. The windows, the slider, and the clear story. Yeah. Uh, above Maybe I've got my bearings off a bit. Maybe it's the is it the west and the north? But there's still a lot of wall there, and it's super high underneath that little eyebrow thing on my jiggy, and, and then above that, <clears throat> my guess yeah. is that color wraps around the the sides. Yeah, it's it's just I mean, in this in this position. You're, you know, obviously we're trying to show the full rendering of the building, but in reality is, you know, a human being, you know, five foot high, and so you're really not seeing everything that you see here, because you're not, you're going to see the bedroom on the right hand side of this picture, and it's actually going to be blocking that upper section of the of the wall as it does. Except it's not upper. though from the from the valley and and from across the street on the on the other side of on the side view of where this rendering is shown. And so um, I guess I'm, I'm trying to do something not for the people on this site in themselves, but rather off site what they're seeing. And it's a lot of light color. And to me, what I think is going to be the most visible project from elsewhere around surrounding properties. Well, th that's just it. Actually, the other properties across the way and behind us all drop down. So they're not seeing up and over like helicopter, like that rendering is. Um, they're, you know, they're seeing from below, as I said before. I don't have any more questions. Thanks, Sean. Um, anybody else in the committee have questions? Cool. Okay, thank you, Bill. We'll discuss the project. Thank you, gentlemen. Questions, comments, not questions, comments from the committee members, please. I'm a little worried about that. Sorry, can I begin? Yes, Sean, please. Yeah. I'm a little worried about the, the bright, brighter, lighter gray being used and wondering if we can darken up the house a bit to have it blend in more with the hillside, particularly from just the places I said <clears throat> across of that Avenue Sevilla. Yeah, it's sort of flag lot over there. I know it looks directly across the, the two lower lots on the, I believe I have my bearings right, the north side of the street, the Pinnacle Way, cul de sac street that runs up there. At the far west end of that project, the, they're not built on yet. At least that furthest west one looks pretty difficult to build yeah. on at all and sits pretty low. <clears throat> so my guess is there's going to be a pretty open view to this particular project from that direction. Likewise, I think from the southwest and, and south also. 
So if the house could darken up a bit, I, I'd rather have that discussion rather than heading down the path of trying to get them to lower roofs and ceilings and things like that because I and just because of our experience on these past projects and now it aligns with the architecture of, of the rest of what's up there. But the color I think could be altered and probably should be in my opinion. And Sean, I totally agree with you, especially because when we very first started seeing projects here, they were all white. Mm -hmm. Now that they've gotten the concept that they can go ahead and use some different colors and a variety of colors, and it still makes a very interesting neighborhood. Maybe this is the darkest house in the entire neighborhood, but because it is the, the front house, the one that people see from off site, it does to me make the most sense that it is the most subtly stand out of any of the houses yeah so representing a a color palette for this particular house and making it the darkest would be something i feel like wheeling and dealing on particularly if this 15 foot setback reduction which seems bonkers to me in the front but um i'd be willing to wheel and deal on that. <laughs> yeah, I think the setback issue has been kind of, you know, established by other projects here. There certainly could, I think all of us could have designed a house that fits on this lot and complies to the setbacks, but mm -hmm. it's this particular plan that they have, they do need some setback reduction for that front bedroom and bath. Um, and at least we do have the 23 foot deep driveway so we can totally park cars uh, off of the street. Uh, that's what, and that's a kind of how I, like all of us could have designed a house that would fit within these setbacks or making a minor, minor particularly like the, the, that rear setback violation that you pointed out, it just it feels lazy and quite, you know, it can't be a single adjustment to the, to the plans for this just to, throw it down on the lot. It, yeah. It, the setback reduction bugs me, but again, um, I like to use it as a bargaining chip. Okay, other comments? Um, Robert? Oh, no, sorry, Steve? Um, yeah, I my comment really is about the back elevation uh, at the pool. It, I know planning advised them to add the eyebrow or the long window and the sliders, but it really feels tacked on. Um, the other one on the on the small volume to the right um, feels more integrated with the facade, but that one feels like it's just kind of stuck on. So I think that should be revisited a bit. Yeah, I think if that if that overhang were to really ever be functional at all, it needs to be not at the above the clear story, but between the clear story and the sliding glass door below it. Yeah, that would never hurt the view because you're looking mainly out and down, not out and up. Yeah, I agree. I mean, you could actually take that the one above the doors on the other smaller volume and just can you know just bring it through. Right. Actually, work well. With some tweak. Can I can I interject? Is this no. Scott? <laughs> no. Sorry, no. it's Tom's the mm -hmm. let us well, let, Bill trying let, to talk. Yeah, let's finish our, our committee comments and then we can have rebuttal from the applicant. Um, any other questions or comments from the committee? Just Robert. I'll, I'll just I'll just say, you know, I um, we've, we've discussed a lot of these elements time and time again, and we keep getting faced with the same elements that are issues with the design. Um, I'm not, I'm personally, I'm not that the little rear setback for the two feet, I'm not really willing to give that. I, that, that is just, that is just a real simple tweak of the angle. This house has so many angles going on that they could resolve that very easily. Um, so 
whatever we, we decide, I think that the they need to at least redesign to maintain that 15 foot setback at the rear. Um, it, and it's a minor thing, but I mean, we've, we have discussed with this applicant on other projects about the heights of the ceilings, about the heights of the roofs, about the shading on the west facing. You know, this house could have easily faced south and would have had equally as great views and, um, and would have potentially, you know, wouldn't have that west exposure. You know, for 13 feet of glass is just insane. So anyway, that's all I have to say. Thank you. I think I've heard that before, but thank you. <laughs> Deja vu. Yeah. Anything else, John? Did you have anything? I don't. Anything additional? No. Okay. I think the committee has kind of had their say. Bill O'Keefe, did you have something you wanted to respond to? Yes, please. Um, so what I was trying to get at is um, talking about the the overhang above the uh, clear story on the back on the south side um or pardon me the west side um the thing is if we drop it between then all of a sudden we're going to get an awful lot of sunlight in that clear story and so i would rather talk about lowering it to the clear story than lowering it below the clear story um as far as the colors if we had to go you know take the the three the six to six and make it the field and drop a darker color for the 626. Um, you know, I'm, I think we could entertain that. Um, and as far as the other comments we were talking about, the section over the garage, that little square, dropping that down so it's terraced more, um, I think we could do that. Um, I, again, I, I, I can't speak for my client, obviously, um, so I, I have to go back to him. Um, unfortunately, he might be in the hospital right now. but. Uh, so I, I hear you. Um, I'd appreciate if we, it's something we could work out with Glenn and make these adjustments as opposed to coming back again to the art. Thank you. Okay, committee, any final comments or a uh, motion? I'll make a motion. John? I'll make a motion that we um, require that this be reviewed again with the rear setback with the following items the rear setback adjustment no violation with that a revision and a restudy of that eyebrow along the rear a west facing facade um a, and a darker palette and it frankly should be a new palette making this the darkest house on the block those those three items not and not a minor adjustment in a in a slight tweak of the light gray to a, the next step down in Don Edwards catalog, but legitimately darker than considerably darker than what's being proposed now for that particularly that lightest of grays. Those three items and can, Sean, can I just raise one thing uh, by darkening the stucco color? You know they're calling out for a white stack stone in the front you know, that might need to be adjusted as well. So a darkening of the stack stone in the, in the front, yeah. not okay. white. Yeah, you pre-select a different stone. Yeah. And, uh, Sean, I think we had a fourth one. Did we capture the, the parapet on top of the garage, the adjustment, Tom, you were suggesting? Mm -hmm. Okay. Can, can I throw just... Um, one more piece of spaghetti at the wall here. The, we, we didn't get into the landscape much, and I only bring this up because of our comments about bringing up some things that we have discussed in the past. I didn't look at the landscape too much, guys, and sorry I'm doing a call from an iPhone tonight, but I'm, I'm hoping there was no white stone being proposed in the front, or particularly on any sloping area where any other house outside of this neighborhood has to look up at it. Can I answer that? Sure. No, th there is no white stone. There is okay. no white stone. Thank you. Okay, can, do we have I, to Sean's motion? Can I get a clarification of something? 
let us finish our motion and then we can clarify. Right. Do we have a second to Sean's motion? Second. Second to John Walsh, your hands up first. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, Mr. O'Keefe, what did you need clarified? Um, I was just curious from Sean's standpoint, uh, if we make the field the 626 color, which is in the color palette you see as the lighter color, would that not be acceptable and then work with a darker color for the accent? Can we can we take a, a peek at that again? It's I'd have so to get Glenn to pull that up again. You know, it's so hard to see, Sean, because Glenn's slide looks like one thing and the book mm -hmm. that I'm looking at looks like a totally different one for the colors. Mm -hmm. But at least if you can go to that um, as a representation. None of these are numbered, are they? The 626, the, the, the upper left, the upper left two, the 625 was the lighter color. The one to the right of this is 626. And so what I'm saying is if the field is the 626 and then we go darker for the accent, would that work with what you're thinking about? I'm, I'm having trouble answering that question. So it's on the top row across horizontally. It's the second from the left. Is that what you're proposing become That's the, field? the darker color that I was suggesting be the field, the main stucco color versus the one to the left of that, which is presently the field color. Yeah, generally that sounds um, like a, a step forward in the right direction to me. Mm -hmm. with, going, with going with a still darker color for the accent color. You, you Correct. Concept, yep. That was what I was thinking. Mm -hmm. That's what we're looking for. I think this is gonna, it, it, like uh, Rotman had pointed out, this now affects the stone color, potentially the garage door color. Um, I can't remember, and I can't tell from that palette. Is it? And never mind. I'm not going to chase that down with window frames and that sort of thing, because I believe you're keeping a consistent palette throughout the project or not. So, anywho. Okay, so we will see a new color proposal with the resubmittal. Um, thank you. That ends our agenda tonight. Um, I do want to make sure everybody in the committee got the invitation for the planning department Christmas due, which is Thursday night at Kathy Wormiak's house. Um, if you haven't gotten that, talk to David or somebody at planning and they'll send you that and hopefully we'll see everybody there. Any other comments? David, anything else? This is our last meeting until next year. So, so um, we will see you on January 17th because the uh, first meeting in January was there was conflicts with the New Year holiday and uh, other meetings. So we won't actually have a meeting for over a month, probably a month and a half now. Wow. Get ready for a big agenda. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's going to be a whopper. <laughs> yeah, the, yeah. The only the only other thing I'd like to mention is I, I think uh, Planning Director uh, Hadwin had mentioned the uh, the city is going back to in person meetings again, where we have the hybrid option um, available uh, for members of the public who wish to join us via the virtual format. Um, so we will look forward to being again in person um, next year. So so sorry, that's. That's not a hybrid option for committee members. For now, I think it will be unless we're told otherwise. So okay. uh, if a committee member does want to participate remotely, they, that option will still be available. I see. And okay. David, is there any discussion in terms of uh, moving the time back to the way it used to be? Um, not yet. Um, once the new council is seated, I think we'll have those discussions again. Um, but yes, we do have the committee's desire to move the meeting earlier. And staff would also appreciate that too. Sure. <laughs> to wit, what time is it? <laughs> okay. Time for bed. Yeah, let's all do 
home. Thank you all very much. And thank you for participating in a long meeting and happy holidays. If we don't see you, we'll see you next year. Yeah, happy holidays. Bye. 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 Bye.